good to go. Let's see. Yep, streaming. Okay. Starting a little early today. So I'm going to end a little early. It is time for more Waste Nights. So, played it once yesterday. That's the uh, first time I've played it. Read through the rule book again. I think I was doing just about everything right except for one thing. I think most of the time when you acquire gear, it's supposed to be broken. Uh, couldn't find any clarification on that, but it does explicitly state that when you put gear in the gear deck, in a little crate here with all the gear, you put them, oh, I have it upside down. Oh, oh I know what's coming first. Oh, no, no, that's right. That's what's coming last. Uh, you put them with the red side, the broken side, face up, and you draw from the bottom. So by default, they're already on their broken side. So I think I was doing that wrong. I think the pieces of gear I found, I was flipping them over to their working side. Apart from that, though, I think I was doing everything right. So Waste Night, second edition. Uh, I had fun with it yesterday, even though playing the one solo mission there is that's supposed to be short and easy. I lost twice. That's fine. Don't want it to be too easy. Although this game's all about the narrative and getting to explore all kinds of stuff here in the 250 page book of tales. So don't want it to be too hard. But yeah, we'll see. I mean, I'm brand new to it, so Okay. All right, so I'm going to try it again. Again, going to try Road to Ruin, and oh, why not read it again? And for Road to Ruin, yeah, this is a, this one's the one adventure that's solo only. It's supposed to be short, and it's supposed to be easy. And you don't do regular player setup for this one. All right, we'll read it again. So Road to Ruin, and this game is... All about a post-apocalyptic Australia, which due to um, long dormant volcanoes that erupted, has now been split in half with a canyon down the middle, full of water. So one little place to get across. Uh, it's very Mad Max in, in uh, setting. All right, so let's, uh, well, let's read the introduction to Road to Ruin again. thing real quick okay yeah that's fine oh wait one other thing well I can check that while I'm reading it in this time of ruination hardly anyone remembers that before the scourge there was a magnificent route circling the continent um, do, 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 do. come on okay that's good There and there. All right. Uh, where are we? You could take it and drive around Australia in a week. Yet, even then it was a back-breaking journey. Long distances, heat, unstable weather, technical difficulties. Only the brave few took this trip. Many years have passed since then. The aftermath of the cataclysm... Eh. The aftermath of the cataclysm and time had been slowly, yet unceasingly, ruining Highway 1. Some parts of it disappeared completely damaged by explosions. Here and there, the desert took its toll, covering whole stretches of the road in sand. In a few strategic places, Cerbero, relics, uh, Cerbero is the uh, big mega corporation in Australia making AI and robots and stuff. Of course, Cerbero. Cerbero relics mined the highway, turning it into a true field of death. At the same time, untamed nature reminded humans that it rules over the most, uh, meh, Typo. Rules over most of the continent now. Nowadays, there exist only a few sections of the highway that still serve its original purpose, fast transportation. That's why everyone calls this horrible route the road to ruin. However, some daredevils still try to make the golden lap. 
Those people dream about forgotten places, hidden gems of public infrastructure, petrol stations missed by looters, cargo terminals, towns waiting for an enterprising visitor. Or maybe it's all about bragging that you've actually made it through National A1. There's no medal for it. At best, just a badge to pin on your ride. But when someone looks such a crazy fool in the eye, they'll know that someone who survived almost that well, they'll know that's someone who survived almost 15,000 kilometers of hell. You're one of the those daredevils famous for making the golden lap. You thought it <clears throat> you thought it had opened up, up some doors for you, but at the end of the day, you ended up just where everyone else is, living a boring life of a survivor trying to see another day in the waste. So yeah, third try on this one. And it says to see one in the Book of Tales. That's just going to tell me the setup for Road to Ruin. Yeah, I choose. Uh, even though there are 13 waste nights, 13 nights to choose from, there are only six that you're allowed to use in this solo scenario. And then depending on which one you pick, you read two different things. And uh, I picked randomly before, and the first time had to take the northern route. The second time had to do the southern route. Uh, and I'm going to... Go randomly again. I'm going to randomly pick a vehicle as well. All right, let's see. All right, I'm going to take the fourth hero in here. So, all right, Zoe Shaw, mechanic. That'll be a new one. Let's see. Okay. Gets two dice and everything. Best attribute is tech. Ooh, has four repair. Hmm. Okay. All right, and then uh, which, well, it'll tell me at some point to pick a vehicle. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Pick up, huh? I should probably pick a good vehicle, but all right. This says it's a medium vehicle. Whenever the vehicle suffers two or more vehicle damage, discard one random gear card from it. What? That's terrible. <clears throat> Changing my mind. I'm not doing that one. Why would I want that? There's nothing good about this. Yeah, no, I'm not doing that. How about the muscle car? No, I don't like that either. Here, how about off-road? All right, I haven't had this one yet. We'll use this. It's a medium. That can have an effect on some stuff. I know there was something when I fought an enemy, it said if you had a heavy vehicle, uh, it took some damage or something. All right. Sure, we'll go this one. And there's Harry the Camel, which would not really work for this adventure. So, not picking that one. All right. There, got my vehicle. So, I picked Zoe Shaw, the mechanic, and this says... Uh, you are the mechanic, the slasher, or the stalker, C50. Uh, that's going to be, I think we're going to be on the southern route again. Mechanic, C50. All right. Oops. 50. Full mobilization, two arms. New Sydney dwellers, two arms. You can see such posters all over the city. Local leaders must be preparing for some conflict. Such, such a commotion can only mean one thing, expansion to the west. Streets are already full of bikers, armed to the teeth and eager to pick a fight, claiming that they work for the merchant cartel, a powerful association of traders from the east coast. This mass levy means trouble. If such a massive brute force isn't quickly directed to, at some enemy, the city will turn into a war zone. For now, newcomers are kept in check. <clears throat> but with each passing day, more and more volunteers for the mercenary militia arrive to New Sydney. On top of that, there are rumors about the talks between the self-appointed Free Mutants League from distant Carcassville and the filthy Corsairs from the port city of Alice Offsprings. Are they going to form an alliance and threaten the lands uh, east of the Great Divide? It seems both of them and the New Sydney merchants are ready for open war and now looking for means to finally settle who rules the South. Okay. So, the setup for this, uh, let's get all these other characters out of the way. And hopefully today I can succeed at this one and then start one of the other adventures. 
Well, I guess I could just go off and do one of the other adventures. You don't have to do them in any sort of order. But this is the short one. It's this one solo one, and it's supposed to be easy, so why not complete that one first? Well, need the guidebook in a second. All right, that's better. Okay, so let's see. Uh, so plot token one goes here in 21. Plot token two is an Alice Offsprings. Number three, I believe is 34. No, 32. All right, we have to go 32, then down to 34. Then 35, and then finally to Carcassville. So, when I, and I get to start at New Sydney, although I need the mini for uh, Zoe Shaw. Alright, let's see. That looks like Zoe Shaw right here. Okay, and even though it's solo, I don't really need to put a specific colored base on there to make sure you uh, tell them apart, but eh. All right, so she can start at New Sydney. Oh, let's read Zoe's background. I don't think I read the background of... Um, Whatever the second character was, Zoe Shaw. Since I haven't had her yet, if your car breaks down or your gun won't shoot, you really want to have Zoe close. She used to be a journeyman working under legendary tinkerer Rusty and learned all his secrets. Or at least that's what she claims. She can repair everything from a knife to a disabled Cerbero robot. And she knows that she can demand any fee for her extraordinary skills. What makes Zoe even more unique? For, for unknown reasons, instead of setting up a workshop and cashing in her talents, she prefers to travel around the continent as if she were looking for some ultimate knowledge. A technological Eden? An answer to the question no one has ever asked. Alright, and yeah, so she only has two exploration. Uh, it's okay. Only seven health. But four repair, so that part's good. Okay, oh, and I guess she has some other special skill here. Once per turn, you may reroll any uh, botch symbol you obtain. Okay. Oh, you may reroll one of them. I think I said any. Okay. So that makes it a little easier to avoid breaking your weapons. And I'll... Okay. All right. That sounds good. Uh, but that's only once per turn. Okay. All right. So you couldn't do it on both a combat roll and a, uh, well, some other roll. Oh. Right, so plot tokens are set up, and then I think it's just going to say, yeah, go to the plot sheet, Troubles in the South. Trouble in the South. Place your knight on New Sydney, place the time marker on two, and then the special marker. Uh, mechanic or slasher start at space five. Stalker, it would have been six. That's the dominance marker. It represents the power struggle in southern Australia between the Free Mutants League from Carcassville and the Merchant Cartel from New Sydney. Farther it is this way, that's more power for the um, Free Mutants League. This way, that's more power for the Merchant Cartel. All right, and then mechanic. So we have to resolve ten. So that'll be a new entry. All right, Road to Ruin, number 10. Uh, there it is. When you bolted the golden lap badge to your car, you had no idea that this small piece of your ride would mean more than dirt and dents in your bodywork or scars on your face. Thanks to this reputation, your repair skills quickly come to be appreciated, and you found a sponsor to help you set up a workshop in New Sydney. It was the Merchant Cartel. However, your dream about a peaceful life soon proved to be a nightmare. You became a small cog in the machine, grinding all the wretched souls and unlucky survivors who came to the city. You had to fix stuff for choice, uh, for choice clients for low pay. 
Fifteen hour long work days, tons of paperwork to justify the parts expenses. You knew this was not the life for you. In one of the local joints, favored by mechanics and bikers, you heard a rumor about miners' unions forming to, in the north. God knows when you ended up at the meeting of idealists making plans to promote a similar initiative in New Sydney. A few days later, your workshop got burned down all, and your sponsors put you in a tight spot. In order to pay your debt to the cartel, you have to travel the road to ruin once again to spy upon the mutant forces threatening the traitor's domination in the south. Setup. All right, choose one of the following gear card sets, sawn off shotgun and vest, or pistol, knife, and trash armor. Well, she's good with, she's better with guns. I mean, I could take the pistol and knife just so I have a melee and ranged weapon. Uh, but then I get trash armor, which is just slightly less protective than a vest. Hmm. Oh, and she only gets to start with one med. Yeah, I'd rather have the vest then. She gets one med, three ammo, and two fuel. Everybody else would start off with two, two, two. So just one med. She gets three ammo. And then, yeah, I think I'll choose a vest and a shotgun. All right, let's start the equipment away. Return to trouble in the south. All right. Goal, quickly figure out what is going on in the south. Collect as many challenge tokens, I mean plot tokens. Collect as many plot tokens as possible before the conflict escalates. So, if the timer ever leaves the track, I'll lose. Special rules for this are lone wolf. If I ever get two injuries, I lose. If my vehicle gets two malfunctions, I lose. And yeah, every time I resolve one of these plot tokens, I get two extra turns. All right, so on the clock, and have to not take too much damage. Last time when I was, uh, what was it, the, uh, uh, whatever her title was, got over to Carcassville, but then had to fight, whatever his name was, Golfer. And there was no way to take him out. Challenge tokens, those can sit somewhere. Okay, so she starts off with one med, three ammo, and two fuel in her vehicle, which I'm using off-road. And then experience tracker. And starting off with a vest and a shotgun. And I'm just using my little coins here to keep track of how many actions I still have yet left because each turn you get two actions and let's see well nothing to do yet although I guess if I really wanted I could explore um, what does it take to get here I have to go through a threat uh, and highway costs zero movement and the off-road has four speed so I get four movement those cost zero mountain and scrub each cost two so it'll cost four to get to there if I go through the threat uh, but it'll cost a lot to get around too much. So first action is going to be movement. May as well start off. Just move down here, going through a threat, so I have to draw a threat token. Oh. If it's not an enemy, I'm going to take two damage. If it is an enemy, um, re-roll all blanks, I think that means. Haven't seen that one yet. Uh, your enemy rerolls all blanks once. Yes. Okay. And <clears throat> moved into a scrub area, so I have to draw a wasteland card for scrub or mountain. Every time you move, you have to do that. And oh, I have to vi fight a giant crab. Uh, the giant crab has threat one, that means I have to draw another threat token. And, oh, what does that one mean? I haven't had that show up yet either. So if I roll any fate, um, your enemy automatically re-obtains one fate. Ugh. What does fate do? 
The enemy gains armor piercing and deals one damage. So armor piercing means my vest won't do anything to protect me, so I could use it. All right, gets to reroll blanks and already is dealing one damage. That's fun. <sighs> uh, resolution, if you were dealt any unprevented armor, break your equipped armor. Oh, great. So even though this isn't gonna do anything, it's still gonna get broken. If I get damaged, which I'm automatically damaged from this. Hmm, how fun. And Giant Crab gets two green dice to roll. Has four hit points. Uh, if I am able to kill the Giant Crab, deal four damage. I'll get one experience point and one gear card. All right. Uh, so let's see. I'll try. What does a shotgun do? Well, and what is my skill with guns? I get one white and one green die. I'll have to spend one ammo to fire the shotgun. And then uh, the shotgun gets to have one white and one green die. Okay, well, decent chance of getting four with that. And if I roll a fate, I deal two damage. But if I roll any fate, well, each, each fate is two damage. The white dice don't have any of those. They have three blank sides two single successes and one double success. Um, these have fate. If I roll any of these, the shotgun is going to break. And then at that point it has what? Just a green die? Otherwise it's the same. But then if it breaks again, it's destroyed. All right, well yes, I'll use the shotgun. I have a decent chance. Oh, giant crab is a melee attack though. So if, if I can if I'm using my gun, since that's a range attack, if I roll four successes and kill it, uh, it will not be attacking me. So these won't do anything if I kill it. So that part's good, at least. All right. So, OK. So I get to go first, since I'm doing a ranged attack. All right. Oh, so I got five. That's enough to kill it, and I did not get any spades, so I don't have to break my shotgun. And I spent one ammo. All right, that was good. Good start. So Giant Crab, since it's dead, it took five damage. It only had four health. It's dead. It doesn't actually get to activate when it's time for melee attacks. So, nope. Its armor piercing is irrelevant. It didn't do any um, unprevented damage to me, so my armor does not get broken. And yeah, the automatic spade doesn't matter because the enemy doesn't attack. Take that, giant crab. All right, good start. So the reward is one experience point and one piece of gear. So yeah, gear comes off the bottom and since it's red side facing up, you don't flip it over. That's, I believe that's supposed to be the case. You leave it on the broken side which is always just not quite as good. Rad out. Uh, discard at any time except in combat to heal one radiation. Okay, and it takes X to repair. That means the only way I can repair that is in a city or in a city, which I will be in a city soon. Uh, what does it do if it's working? Discard at any time except in combat to heal three radiation. Ooh, that'd, that'd be nice to have it working. Uh, just in case I get a bunch of radiation at some point. All right, but it's broken and my off-road can hold five pieces of gear. That's its capacity. So, well, all right, has that in it right now. Okay, and then that was it for resolving that. Put that discard pile over there. And that was it for the first action of my turn. All right, Res oops, sorry, resounding success. Best start I've had so far. Actually defeated an enemy. I don't think I defeated any enemies the last run. All right. Yep. All right. So now mm, I don't have to uh, resolve the plot token yet. But may as well. I mean, I could do some exploring if I want. But I am on the clock. Okay. So. Uh, next action is going to be to do this plot action. 
I have to do all six of them and then well hopefully I won't have as hard a time I won't have to fight golfer and have as hard a time with that uh, so this will be um, do I want to try to protect new male burn or whatever it's called oh the male burn beauties Oops. where is I don't want the rule book book of tales well and the guidebook so uh, plot token one it's 15 it's just whatever plot token and, and then a five so yeah 15 25 35 etc okay 15 road to ruin 15 says you reach Mailburn, a place ruled by ruthless female gangs with hardly any petrol left in your tank this is the westernmost outpost which the cartel can still consider friendly however the situation might change this very day. You can see smoke and hear gunshots coming from afar. The ruined city is besieged by mutants. Its dwellers are fiercely fighting for every building and square. Uh, so we need the Mailburn Beauties enemy card and the Alice Outcast enemy card. And then we have to choose side with the Mailburn Beauties, side with the mutants. Uh, you're just a scout. You watch the battle to report later. Or. If you're a sla the slasher, which I'm not, I'm a mechanic, it's better than any skull crusher match. You enter the fray eager for blood. What do you do? Try to kill everybody? Uh, Alright. So, let's see. Last time I sided with um, the beauties, which did have one good effect later. And I am working for the, whatever, merchant cartel. We're against the Free Mutant League, so I don't know. Uh, it's probably still a good idea to side with the beauties. Although I guess I don't have to choose until I get the enemy cards out. So, all right, well, let's get those. And let's see, I still need something. Mm, yeah, use one of the other vehicles. All right, there, bookmark. Since I need to read that one some more. All right, let's see. So, um, one of them is has to be one of them is in this deck. The other one's in the other deck. So I have to reshuffle both of them. That's obnoxious. All right, well, let's just go. Okay, so this other has the um, Mailburn Beauties or the oh, there they are. The other one has the uh, Alice something. Alright, so if I fight them, they have a melee attack, they roll a green and a red, I have four hit points. And if you attack using a ranged weapon, the enemy additionally rolls the same dice as your weapon when attacking. Ooh, so they'd also have a white and a green, if I'm using my shotgun again. Eh. Okay, and then the other one's in here. is Alice's Outcast. So I sided with them last time and fought Alice's Outcast. They also have a melee attack, a white, a green, and a blue. Uh, and the reward is a gear card and an ammo. The reward from if I fight Mailburn Beauties is fuel and meds. Do need some more meds at some point, probably. But I'd like more gear cards and more ammo. Um, Ooh, and if Alice's Outcast damages me, that the wounds are contaminated wounds. Well, I have the vest to block too, so that shouldn't be too bad. And if I'm using the shotgun again, that's a ranged attack, so they might not even fight back. Uh, yeah, let's uh, stick with same as last time. We'll side with the Mailburn Beauties, since this is, they are on the side of the uh, Merchant Cartel. Uh, although at some point I should see what happens if I try to defy my new client, or no, not client, I work directly for them. 
So yeah, we'll side with Mailburn Beauties. Once I finish this successfully once, then maybe I'll play it again and see what happens when you take the other route. Uh, so what does it say? What was this one? 15. You side with the beauties and help them defend the city from the horde? See 95. Ninety-five. You drive your vehicle into the thick of battle and start running over one mutant after another. At first, the defenders are surprised, but they soon counterattack. A moment later, you fight side by side with the feral horde. Move the dominance marker one space up the track. It's up to six now. Um, resolve combat with Alice's outcast. According to number of rules, you gain Maleburn Beauty's attack dice in this combat. Oh yeah, that's right. You also get their dice. Okay, so I get these if I'm using the shotgun again, so I'll lose another ammo. And I get green and red. Mailburn beauties are adding on for me. So all I need is three successes in these dice, and they won't even attack me. Um, anything else I need to read first? Nope, and then it's if you defeat the enemy. If you do not defeat the enemy, it says something, but we don't want to read that yet. Okay. Okay, so I'm not even going to get some dice for Alice's Outcast because I really doubt with all these I'm going to get fewer than three successes. And the red one could have a botch on it, although if it does, I can reroll that. A lot of, no, good chance of spades though. I'm probably gonna break my shotgun. No, no broken shotgun. So I can reroll this in if I want because of Zoe's skill. However, I already have five successes. So I'm already dealing enough damage to kill that. So I don't wanna roll this again because then I might end up with that and that'll deal two more damage because of the uh, shotgun, but then it would break it. And I don't, oh wait, wait, wait. No, but I, it's a botch right now. This will automatically break my shotgun. What am I thinking? So yes, I need to re-roll one of these. I still have a chance of breaking the shotgun, though. <sighs> Alright, shotgun got broken. That's too bad. So now it just has a one green die, no white dies. So next time I would be rolling these. Alright. Uh, that's too bad. But, again, ranged attack. They have a melee attack, so they don't get to fight back. So I don't get attacked again. They're just dead. And I get ammo. So I get back the ammo I just used. And another piece of gear. So draw one off the bottom. Let's see what we get this time. Ooh, pain saw. Now this one's a two-handed weapon, so you can't have it and the shotgun equipped. Uh, it only has one white die, but it says engagement. So yeah, before you do any rolling or anything, you can choose to spend one fuel to gain two red dice when attacking. That's nice. So, uh, But then you have a fairly high chance of breaking it. But two red dice, that can do a lot of damage. What if it's working in working condition? Um, same thing. Hmm. All right, well, that could be... That could be good for dealing a lot of damage, because these red dice have two ones, a two, a three, a spade, so a fade, which, well, that counts as a one on the pain saw, and then botch, which breaks it, although Zoe can re-roll one of these once. Okay. Um, do I want to equip that yet? Hmm. Unfortunately, it's two-handed. I can't have both of them. It costs one fuel. Um, I'm gonna stick with a shotgun for now. We'll put it in the. Uh, we'll put it in the off-road. Maybe. Yeah, if I repair it, which uh, for repair I can't repair both the shotgun and that that costs three to repair. Uh, that's okay. All right. So these can be discarded. And then what does it say in here? If you defeat the enemy. 
You and the city defenders have managed to repel the vanguard of the mutant army. Maleburn remains under the cartel's control, and the scouts of the Horde flee west. Move the dominance marker one more space up the track, and note in the Outback Chronicles that Maleburn was saved. All right, so now it's up to seven, the dominance marker. And I have to get out my Outback Chronicles. And note in there that Maleburn was saved, because that might come up later. Who am I using this time? Zoe. All right, mail burn was saved. So noted. All right, well, that was second action of the first round. Oh. Resolving a plot token, I was supposed to move the timer up two turns. Uh, yeah, I did both my actions, so first turn is over. At this point, if I'd made it up to three experience, I'd get an upgrade, but not yet. I still haven't had an upgrade. Uh, all right, so next round, so now the timer goes down to three. And now I get two actions again. All right, so now I need to make my way to Alice Offsprings. Um, let's see. I think last time I tried to avoid these. Well, to avoid these completely would be to go two. Desert only costs one. These each cost two. Uh, so two, three, four, five, seven, eight, nine, and then that's a shrub. So that's yeah, 11 to get to there, avoiding these. Uh, I don't think that's very good. Actually, no, you don't have to go through that one. You can just go this way. Hmm. Uh, now, 11 is too much, although I may have to take two turns to get there. I think what I did before was I went through the radiation. Because it's two, these all cost zero, so it's four to get to there. That'll be one move. So one turn to get to here, and then another turn to get to here, because that'll be one, two, three, four. Um can't travel through craters, so there's really no way of avoiding the contamination. Yeah, I think I'll do it like I did it last time. Um, so one turn is going to be to move. And yeah, I'll do that first. And then, uh, depending on what happens when I get to here, camp or explore. Alright, so yeah, it's two plus zero plus zero plus zero plus two. So that's four going that way, but I do take some radiation. First radiation doesn't do anything to Zoe. Next one would make me lose a die every time I roll. So I don't want any more radiation. Uh, but I do have rat out that can remove radiation. Okay, uh, so got the radiation and no threat tokens. I went around that. So now I just have to draw a wasteland card that matches mountains. Ooh, and Calor. This is the first time one of these has come up. So it says, yeah, resolve the entry from the plot sheet, matching the letter, and discard this card. If there's no matching entry, then you have to draw again. Um, back to the guidebook. So for Trouble in the South, which is what I'm on, on so on this page, it says if I get encounter E, I have to resolve 41. All right, so this is new. OK, first time an encounter has happened. Let's see. Let's see what this one says. Hey. Okay, 41. You have the impression that for the last few days you haven't been driving on the famous Highway 1. Actually, the road is so rough, it shouldn't even be called that. Nature and time have truly impacted this stretch. However, even in the wilds, you cannot forget about the conflict in the south. You encounter a group of mutants with enormous burners. They're probably preparing to burn out the scrub, but who knows? Hmm. So I get to choose. I give them a wide berth, just in case. I offer them help, but I really don't... But No, it says you offer them help, but you really want to take a look at the burners. Um, well, Zoe does have te good tech skill. Or if I have at least one fuel, I do. 
It seems they lack the fuel for the burners. Maybe you could help them out. Hmm. Well, helping out the mutants, I'm sure, is going to shift this down this way, which, good, bad, I don't know. I think the only reason Golfer came out was, I think that happened when this reached 8. So maybe if I can get to Carcassville with this still in the middle, with neither side dominating the other, uh, that might be good. So, let's help out the mutants. Uh, getting a look at the burners would be good. Or I give them some fuel. Well, at least I assume I'll be giving them some fuel. Hmm... Yeah, let's try that. Okay, so it says, if I have at least one fuel, go to 108. You approach the mutants. After a short conversation, you guess that it's a squad of saboteurs from the Free Mutants Army intent on starting a fire and cutting off the cartel supply lines. They've used up all fuel to get here, and there's nothing left for the burners and flamethrowers. They're ready to trade for that the loot they got on the way. Uh, you may discard up to two fuel to draw one gear card. What do you mean up to two? Can I just discard one fuel to draw a gear card? Does this continue? Oh, yeah, okay. Uh, it, on the back, it's this isn't the end of it, so um, I have to choose how much fuel I'm discarding. Um, well, let's give them two. Why not? Hopefully I can pick up some fuel at some point. I um, mean, I'll probably be exploring, so maybe I'll get some fuel. All right, so let's say two fuel for a gear card. So what do I get this time? What is this? Repair kit. Okay. When performing the camp action, you can discard this to, fli to flip one broken gear card without the X icon to its working side or repair three vehicle damage. All right, so if something had a high repair cost, well, this could repair it. But it costs four to repair it. Well, what happens if I repair this? Uh, when performing the camp action, you may break this card. Oh, you can break it. All right, see. Um, to flip one broken gear card without the X icon to its working side, or to discard one malfunction card. All right, well, if I repair this first, I can do one repair while breaking this, and then do another repair and discard this. Or repair it again and whatever. Hmm. Uh, yeah, that could be valuable, especially if I get a malfunction on the vehicle, because in this adventure, if you get two malfunctions, you lose. Normally in the rules it says on, well, so on most of the adventures, it's if you get three malfunctions, you're eliminated. Or if you take three injuries, you're eliminated. But malfunctions and injuries you can get rid of in a city, but not in this adventure. In this adventure, you're stuck with them. Uh, but however... Well, you're stuck with them. You can't have a city remove them, but something like this could remove a malfunction. So that, yes, that could be useful. All right, uh, but it's currently broken. I have capacity five. I can st I can only have two more pieces of gear in my off road. Okay, um, but if I camp out anytime soon, or do some repairing in the city, I mean, I think I'll do the pain. Well, actually, no. If I'm in the city, I'll get the rat out. If I'm camping, I'll fix the pain saw first. Okay. So let's see what the result is because I gave them two fuel. Oh, it's up here. If you discard at least one fuel, the mutants, well supplied by now, start to burn out the withered plants in a systematic way. Soon, fire spreads to the branches of the closest acacias, and then maybe it'll even reach the coast. You leave before it blocks your path to the highway. Uh, move the dominance marker one space down the track for each fuel you discarded. Okay. It's back to five. That's where it started. If it ever gets down to three or up to eight, that'll trigger something. So, yeah, let's, I'm going to try to keep it in here and see what happens. I think that can avoid the golfer. Um, if you do not discard any, well, all right, that'll do something else. <laughs> we don't want to read that. Okay. Um, all right, 
so that was the uh, wasteland card. Did that? Well, that was that was nice. Got a little gear, although I had to spend my fuel. And then yeah, move this down to five. Okay. I still have one more action. Well, I don't need to camp. I can't move again. So let's go ahead and explore. Uh, Zoe has Exploration 2, so I can draw one Exploration card. If I don't like it, I can draw one more, but I'll be stuck with that one. Unless I spent some fuel to draw more, but I don't have any fuel. Uh, we're in Mountains. Gain three chosen resources. Okay, but if I do that, I have to attach one Malfunction card to the vehicle. Uh. So resources, I can get some meds, some ammo, some fuel. Any three I want any combination of three from those, but I get a malfunction. I really don't want that. I do have a repair kit that can get rid of a malfunction, but mm, rather not do that. So I'm gonna draw again. All right, so exploration two, this is the last one I can draw. I'm stuck with this one. All right, well, that's that's okay. One med, one fuel, and I suffer one damage to my vehicle. Um, it has chassis five, so it eh, it'll take five damage total before it'll malfunction. And I get a med and a fuel. All right, I'll take that. Oops. Uh, that's right, I also need fuel for the uh, pain saw. That takes two fuel to use, is that what it was? No, you may spend one fuel to gain two red dice. All right, so I do wanna have some fuel around for that. Um, I can only hold two fuel, uh, excuse me, I can only hold three fuel. All right, I think it's looking good so far. Much better than last run. Okay, and the last time uh, in Alice Offspring, I got to uh, take a boat over to here. Although I think that was because, I think that was a special thing I got to do based on the class of whatever character I used last time. So I might not get to do that this time. Uh, but that was my second turn. So all done. Um, no upgrades yet. So start of the next round. Timer goes down to two, but it'll go up in a minute. So it'll cost four to get there. I get one contamination on the way. Um, and yeah, I don't have anything else to do. Well, if I camp, I can get rid of my radiation and repair something. I can also do that in the city. Mm. Although in the city, uh, doing the rat out, that would be a good idea. I'm thinking what I should do is move to the city and then do a city action rather than doing this yet. And then on the next round, I can do another city action and then resolve this. Let's see, if I have to go around this way to get here, if I don't get to go across there, it costs, uh, that costs two, so two, zero, zero, one, one. So it only costs four to get there, but I would be going through two threat tokens and a radiation. Hmm. Well, I could also barter in the town. That could be good. Hmm. Well, I definitely want to repair some stuff. The rat out can only be repaired in town. That'll get rid of three radiation. However, uh, how much radiation am I going to pick up? I'm going to pick up one. If I have to go this way, I'll pick up one here. And uh, maybe one there. From here to here, it's two. Oh, no, you yeah, can't go this way craters in the way, and that's not a space. Going this way, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, no radiation, though. So if I have to go around this way, there's radiation there and radiation. Uh, let's see, from here, yeah, probably need to go through that one, or maybe go around. Might pick up two more. However, I'm going to heal at some point. Uh, 
I don't want to wait until I get all the way to three radiation to use that. Hmm. Well, I think I am going to move and then, yeah, city action. All right, so first one is move. Oh, and what do I want to have equipped? Um, I could use the paint saw now. I do have one fuel, but I have two ammo. I think I'll stick with the shotgun for now. And I have to choose that before. Once you're in the process of moving, you can't swap out anything until after you've re finished everything for that, which is including drawing a card and resolving it, maybe fighting an enemy. All right, so it's one, two, three, four. So I don't have to use any fuel to get there. I do pick up a contamination, though. It takes one heal to turn it into a regular wound, and then another one to take it off. All right. Um, when you're camping, one med heals three. So two of that has to be used for that. All right. <clears throat> so I got my contamination, and then I draw a wasteland card uh, for scrub. Cerbero Hunter. I don't think I've fought one of these before. If you're on a scrub space, ah, this enemy gains ambush and armor piercing. Oof. So it gets a green and a blue. So if it's ambushing me, that means no matter what, it attacks It attacks before I get a chance to do anything. If I can kill it, it only has three hit points, so it should be able to kill it. I get ammo and meds. A sp on a spade or a fate, that's worth two damage. And yeah, I'll I am going to be using my shotgun rather than fighting barehanded. So, oh yeah, shotgun's broken, so I'm only getting one white die. Well, I get a white and a green from my gun's ability, and then one green die from the shotgun. Hmm. Hopefully I don't break the shotgun. Then all I have is the pain saw. I need some more weapons. Okay. So I'm spending an ammo. Well when I roll, unless this knocks me out, although there's no chance of that. Can't do six damage with these two dice. All right, so Cerbero has ambush and armor piercing, so my vest can't block anything. Ooh, that was fortunate. Uh, so a botch, that's doing nothing, and one damage, that's it. Um, I can use a vest to block two damage, and then that breaks the vest, and then it only blocks one, and, and it, well, if you block a second time, it's gone. Uh, I don't think that's worth it. I think I don't. I don't want to use that if I'm blocking only one. So I'm going to take one damage. Red side. I'm only going to take one damage. All right, and then now I get to retaliate. Now, without that extra white die, I might get three hits. Hopefully. If I don't, I just don't get the ammo and the meds. Come on. Oh, well. I got one. It's alright. No gear or experience, so I'm not as sad that I don't kill him. I would like the uh, ammo, though. I have two meds now. I'm okay with that. I would like some more ammo. Or fuel for the pain saw. Hmm. Okay. So, since I didn't kill him, I just don't get the rewards, but you don't. You don't do another round of attacks, you just resolve one attack, and that's it. Alright, well, I took one damage and lost one ammo, didn't get any rewards. That wasn't too bad. Definitely could have been worse. And now I'm in Alice Offsprings, so I could resolve the plot token now, but I'm in a city. I'm not going to be in a city again until Carcassville, so... I think it'd be okay to delay resolving this one turn. Although last time when I resolved it, that immediately ended the turn, and so I lost one of my actions. So when I do resolve that, I want it to be the second one. Um, let's see. So I'm going to go to the city. If I choose to barter, I mean these items are worth six total. That's this is the barter value. So these are worth six, or you can trade in resources, they're worth one. You can buy resources for one, or uh, you can draw some gear, and depending on what their values are, you can buy them. Uh, hmm. 
My shotgun's only worth one. The vest is worth two. Broken or working. I think they're always worth the same. Yeah, paint saw three if it's working, three if it's broken. But I want to repair stuff and I want to heal because that'll get rid of the, um, I think it's going to get rid of the radiation and all the damage I've taken. Well, up to four. But it'll only cost three healing, one to turn this over and then two to take those off. So I don't think I'm going to do any bartering. So yeah, I want to do some repairing. All right, so <clears throat> city action. So I want to go to the quack. And yeah, the quack is heal one damage and four, well, it says, no, it says heal one D and four A. I still don't know what the D and the A are supposed to be, but the D is, I, I mean, I don't know why it's D, but yeah, the one is I heal one radiation. And then the four is four wounds. So it costs three to remove all that. All right, and then I get to visit one other shop. Um, yeah, so I go to the stalls to barter. I could go to the garage to do some repairs on the vehicle. No, not necessary. Or I can go to the workshop. There I can flip over any one broken gear card, even if it has an X. Well, it's the only way to do an X one, other than, um, well, things like this that say if you discard it, you can repair something with an X. Um, yeah, let's do the rad out. So now, if I discard this at any time, three radiation goes away. Well, that's the max I can have. All right, so now that's in working condition. And that was the end of my turn. So now timer, well, new turn or new round. Timer goes down to one. So I have to do this this, this turn. Uh, but I'm going to do another city action. Wait, 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 am I? I mean, there's only one damage to repair. I don't have to heal. So quack is, no. It'd be silly to go to the garage and repair one damage to the vehicle. Uh, maybe I should barter. What was the repair kit worth? The repair kit's worth two. I mean, if I can find some better weapon, maybe I trade in a chainsaw. Hmm. And I would get to repair, well, I can repair the pain saw by going to the um, workshop. But I can also repair this by uh, camping. Or I could repair this because that costs more to repair. Hmm, or I can barter. Well, if I'm gonna barter, I should do that first, because then I can repair some new piece of gear I get. Yeah, you know what, I've never bartered before. All right, so my first action is gonna be a city action. First thing I'm gonna do, because I can visit two shops, is barter. So what I do is draw three gear cards. Okay, and this is the offer. So this is what the, uh, in the stalls, this is what is being offered. Lucky Charm, it'll only cost one. Smoke Grenade, one, or Outback Bible, two. So like if I traded the uh, repair kit, that's worth two, I could trade it for the Outback Bible. Or I could trade one fuel for one resource and get the Lucky Charm, for example. Or I can trade in um, some equipment, some gear, and get resources. Perhaps more fuel for when I want to use my pain saw. Or some more ammo if I want to keep using the shotgun. All right, well this doesn't look that good. What does this do? Smoke grenade. During engagement, so before you do any, um, Uh, before you do any rolling, <coughs> discard this card to treat all dice, including yours, rolled during this combat as white dice. Okay. So make it very hard to uh, kill the enemy, but if you come up against an enemy that's going to do, do say, a red and a blue die, turn those into white. That's not too bad. How about if it's working? If it's working, 
Discard this card to treat just your enemy's attack dice as white dice. Ooh, that's kind of nice. Yeah, that could be interesting. And Smoke Grenade, you don't have to equip that. That can be in your car, and then uh, when a fight's going to happen, you can use it. Uh, I can only have five pieces of gear in the off-road. All right, Outback Bible. When performing a test, you may discard this card to re-roll any of your dice. You cannot use this card in combat. All right, that's if it's broken. If it's working, when performing a test, you may break this card to re-roll any of your dice. You cannot use this card in combat. All right, so basically you can do it twice if it's working. And that's another X one. So that can only be repaired here. That might be a good one to have. And same thing, that will just sit in the car and then could be used, but not in combat. All right, and then Lucky Charm. You may discard this card to re-roll one die in any roll. Even rolled by an enemy or another knight, the new result must be accepted. Okay, so you roll something bad, enemy rolls something good, you can change one die. Uh, Oh, if it's in working condition, you can reroll up to two dice. Okay. Uh, now that one only costs one. I mean, the nice thing about that is that's any roll. It can be combat or not combat. Uh, but the Outback Bible, you can reroll any number of dice you want, although it does cost two. And you get to use it twice if you make it working. Uh, yeah, I think I want that. I could just trade it for the repair kit. And then I can visit the uh, workshop to repair this. Hmm. Yeah, that sounds like a good idea. Okay. I mean, the repair kit is... Uh, maybe not. I could also trade the vest, although then I have no armor. Hmm. I could trade the pain saw and get the Outback Bible and the smoke grenade or Lucky Charm. Uh, but then my only weapon is a shotgun. Actually, if I traded the pain saw, I'd probably get the Outback Bible and one ammo. But, oh, I think that pain saw is going to be nice. Say if I have to fight golfer, it'd be really nice to have to use that and roll two red dice. Plus two, well, plus three white dice. Although fighting golfer, it was whatever uh, level the dominance marker was, you'd subtract that from his health. He started with 15. So if, it was, if I try to keep it in this range, yeah, that's not going to be enough to kill him. Hmm. What do I want? I think I do want this. Uh, do I just want to trade it straight up for the repair kit? Eh, yeah, all right, I'm gonna do that. All right. So these all get discarded. Okay, so now I have the Outback Bible, but it's broken. But I get to visit two shops, so I can also go to the uh, workshop and repair any gear. So this is getting repaired. So now this can be used twice. When performing a test, you can break this card to reroll any of your dice. But it can't be used in combat. That's the only bad thing. And then you can do that one more time. All right. Uh, so that was both my city actions, or both the shops I visited for the city action, and the other action is going to be to resolve this one. So now I get to read 25. It's 
25. You spend some time in Alice Offsprings, trying to understand the moods of the inhabitants of the pirate city. It's obvious that the free mutants from the other side of the Great Divide made a deal with the mutated Corsairs, and the city is the most important transit point for the League's forces in the south. Check the Outback Chronicles. If Melbourne was saved, C-156. If Melbourne fell, C-134. I really should uh, have Melbourne fall at some point and see what happens. If none of the above is true, C-105. Or if you just don't do anything and go along your way. Uh, but Melbourne was saved, so we go to 156. One fifty six. It looks like the mutant offensive has been stopped for the moment. Survivors of the siege are licking their wounds on their on the piers, waiting for transport. Local captains are making good money smuggling the sorry remnants of the horde. It'll be easy to join this riffraff and disguise yourself as a refugee eager to return to the West. My options are I negotiate with the transport. I negotiate the transport with one of the captains. Uh, with my negotiate, I have a white and a green die for negotiate. Plus, I have the Outback Bible. You sneak on a boat in a mutated refugee's guys, C-48. Um, that's what I did last time, and it was a survival roll. That's what I thought. Well, that was my guess as to what it was going to be. It was survival roll, and the character I had was two green dice for survival. Or, if I'm the mechanic, that's what I am. It's easy to find a broken ship in a port city. You offer to help with the repairs in exchange for transport. Well, let's do that. Let's do the one that requires being a mechanic. All right, 75. Test tech, and I need two successes. Okay, two green dice. Don't want to read the result yet. Well, test tech, unless it says to do any other extra rolls. Nope, it just says success and failure under that. So, all right, roll two. I do have the Outback Bible. In case I fail. Nope, I got two. All right, success. Um, all right, success. You easily deal with the old engine of this cutter. Looks like mutants didn't quite catch what motor oil is for. You fix the ship and your own, huh? Oh, what? You fix the ship and your own crossing west at the same time. All right, whatever. Uh, but by doing so, you also support the mutant army. Oh. Wait, I'm I'm fixing my own ship and fixing a mutant ship. I guess move the dominance marker one space down the track. Oop. Eh. It's almost going to trigger that one. I don't want that to happen. I want to keep it in here. So, next time, whatever I do, something needs to be not good for mutants. Uh, <clears throat> if I want to keep it in the middle. Place your night figure on space 36. You lose all remaining actions. But I already spent all my actions, so take that. Oh, and this should have gone up to three. Well, it should have gone up two when I did the plot point. All right, so the mutants are close to becoming dominant. I don't want that to happen. Um, is this where I was able to poison water, or was that here, or here? I don't know. Uh, I want to poison that water when I get a chance. That'll be bad for mutants. Okay, uh, new round, because I used all my actions, so now timer goes down to two. All right, so it'll cost two, four, six, seven to go that way or this way to avoid the radiation, or two, that's free, four, five. Mm. Uh, one fuel gets me two movement points. Yeah, so I can't go this way and get there in one turn. I would like to get there in one turn. And then getting to here, it's one, two, three, four, five. It's also five that way. Yeah, yeah if I don't find any fuel somewhere, it's gonna take two turns to do one of those. Well, actually, this way it's one, two, three, four, five, six to avoid the threat token. That would be a good one to spend fuel on because one fuel would give me two extra movement. That would give me the six. Uh, let's see. Two, 
four, five, six. Or I, this way, I could avoid the radiation and take the threat token instead. But either path I take, I have to spend one, spend one fuel. I have the rat out, so radiation I'm not that worried about. If I ever get up to two radiation, then I'll use it. Yeah, all right, let's just go through the radiation. So, but I do have to spend a fuel, because this will cost two, plus zero, plus two, plus one to get there. And I only have four movement on that off-road. All right, so moving, moving is one action. I take a radiation, and now I have to draw a desert card. Draw a wasteland card for desert or highway. Ooh, winged death. Okay, it's relentless. So even if I shoot it with a ranged weapon, oh, shoot. Well, I wouldn't have changed. I was gonna say, I forgot to check to see if I wanted to uh, swap out any gear, but I don't have any fuel for the pain saw, so I don't want to equip it anyway. Um, <clears throat> yeah, shotgun, although this is my last ammo. No rewards. Ah. Kind of wish I had a smoke grenade. Uh, but this enemy is relentless, so even if I shoot it with a gun and kill it, it's still going to attack me. If you have any contamination, this enemy gains threat too. Ooh, good thing I don't have any contamination. I'd have to draw two threat tokens. Uh, if this enemy is defeated, heal one radiation. Eh. Uh, I'm not that worried about that. I don't really want to use my ammo. So it's relentless, so no matter what, like I said, even if I use the shotgun, it only takes two to kill it, so that should happen, but even if I use it, it's still going to attack back. And I get no rewards for killing it other than I'll get to heal a radiation. Uh, and they get a blue and a green. If I had that smoke grenade, I could turn these into white dice. Uh, all right. Um, yeah, I don't want to use my last ammo, so I'm just going to attack barehanded. And Zoe, using the blade skill, if I attack barehanded, I just get two white dice. All right, and they're both melee attacks, so they happen at the same time, or they get well, they both get rolled and they get resolved at the same time. Uh, I think that's all I want to do. All right, well, if I get damaged, I do have my two meds. All right, winged death rolls, one and a spade. What does a spade do? One damage, okay, two damage, yeah, that's not bad. And if I can deal two damage, I will get to heal the radiation. I got zero. That's all right, all that would have happened was the radiation went away, I don't care. All right, so I take two damage and get no rewards. Or I get two wounds and get no rewards. That's all right. Okay, and then um, that was just a move here. I think second action is going to be, yeah, I may as well do that. Or I could explore and take two shots at exploring to hopefully get some, oh no, no, next turn I want to move. Eh, no, it doesn't matter. I'll do this. All right, so this goes up two. So that's my other action is to do plot point three. Okay, so that's gonna be 35 in here. In the region of the outback where you've just arrived, one can find hundreds of, of similar places. Dugouts is actually a remnant of a mine from before the scourge. Oh, you have to be the stalker to do the water pumps. Uh, I don't get to do the water pumps. Too bad. Can't poison the mutants. Anyway, the only thing left today is a deep crater with characteristic steps leading down a huge hole and a few working drilled wells that make this place an important strategic point. The inhabited parts of the mine have been taken over by mutants who have started expanding the town. Now, tens of huts are being raised on rock shelves, <clears throat> and in the night campfires mark wide, round edges of each floor of the settlement. I can help the settlers organize themselves in this hostile place, which I don't want to do because I'm too close to the mutants gaining dominance. I can sabotage the traffic system between the town levels. 
I'm going to do that. And if I were the stalker, I could try to poison the water. But I'm not the stalker, I'm the mechanic. All right, so I'm sabotaging the traffic system. So C97. 97, you've prepared some makeshift explosives. Uh-oh. You may discard any number of, of um, fuel and or ammo. At least two will have an effect. Oh, man. I don't have any fuel and I only have one ammo. Darn. So, not possible. If you do not discard at least two re resources, uh, the idea of paralyzing this shithole was clever, but the lack of resources you are forced to but for the lack of resources, you are forced to resign. Oh. The cartel will have to deal with this place some other way. Nothing happens. Yeah, all right. Darn. Needed one more ammo or one fuel. Oh, well. Uh, nothing happened, so that was it. Well, nothing happens to the dominance tracker. Uh, that was both my actions, so the round is over. Timer goes down to three. Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, I have, I do have some time to spare since I did this one and this one two turns in a row. So I'll definitely explore first. I want to find some resources. Uh, I could camp and finally repair the pain saw, but I don't have any fuel for it. Uh, but it also might good, be good to repair the shotgun. Uh, those are both working. I can't repair the pain saw and the shotgun. That would require five repair. I only have four. Uh, <clears throat> but that would also let me do some healing, although I'll, a med will heal three wounds when you're camping. I don't want to waste any of that potential. I'll wait until I take some more damage because I'd have to take five damage in one combat to uh, get knocked out. So yeah, let's explore. All right, first action is explore. And I have exploration two. So same thing. If I don't like this one, I can draw one more, but then I'm stuck with that one unless I spend fuel, but I don't have any fuel and I'm in the desert. One ammo. Mm. So I can take that or draw one more. Hmm. So I'll be stuck with the next one. <sighs> I'd rather have fuel. I don't know if I'm going to find fuel in the desert, though. Uh, I feel like every time you explore on the highway, it almost always has fuel. All right. Yeah, I'm drawing one more, but this is I'm stuck with this one. Yeah, one fuel and one damage to my vehicle. Okay, I'll take that. All right, next. Hmm. So now I can make it to here. I can avoid everything by going one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, and then these three spots are highway, so it'll cost nothing. So I could get there now. And then on the next turn, I can do some exploring and resolve this. And if I'm exploring, I might find some more fuel because I'll be on highway. Yeah, let's do that. All right, so I'm going to move. And I'm using my fuel, so I'm sticking with the current loadout I have. Uh, oh, wait a minute. Wait, wait, wait. No, I had one damage, and then Winged Death did one more to me. I didn't take two. I was going to say, I wait, I could have blocked the two with the vest. But no, I took one damage two different times. So didn't want to waste the vest on either one of those. All right. All right, so I spent the fuel so I can move one, two, three, four, five, six, and I'm there. Uh, no threat tokens, no radiation, no contamination. So I just have to draw a highway. Wasteland card. So what am I getting this time? Hell Raiders. 
Did I fight them yesterday? Can't remember. Engagement. You cannot roll any dice this combat unless you discard one fuel. Oh, great. So I can't fight them. And ooh, a green, a green, and a blue. Ugh. Kind of wish I had bought that smoke grenade. So they get to roll all these. Ah, they, they actually could potentially knock me out. Um, a fate deals one damage. And I don't have any fuel to discard, so there's really nothing I can do. I do have the vest, though. If they're going to do a lot of damage to me, I'll at least block two. They're not going to deal seven damage. This doesn't have a three on it. These can do at most. The most they could do is six. Yep, all right. Um, okay. They attack, I don't get to do anything. If I could beat them, I'd get a med and ammo, but I don't get to roll anything, so that's not possible. Four. Eh, all right. Uh, so vest gets broken to block two damage, so I only take two. But that does put me at enough damage that I do probably want to camp at some point and use one of my meds. Just take off three. Yep, that's it for this. I don't get to fight back. I get no rewards. That was my second turn, so now round's over. Start the new round. Hmm. <clears throat> maybe instead of camping, I should explore. I mean, maybe instead of exploring, I should camp. What does it take to get here? Zero, one, two, one. It takes four to get here, so I can get here without any fuel. Although I will get one contamination. Uh, it would be a good idea to camp and get rid of some of that damage. Plus, while I'm camping, I can finally fix the pain saw. Need fuel for it, though. I think I will... You know what? I think I'm going to um, camp and do this. Or do this and then camp, and then next turn I will explore and move. Hopefully get fuel. Yeah, that's the plan. Alright, so I have two turns, two actions for this one. Uh, yeah, we're going to first... Let's resolve this. So this is going to go up two. Read 45. It takes more than a couple of hours to locate the place the cartel men told you about. Finally, you find a ruined military harbor full of huge rusted warships bristling with cannons. They look much more powerful than the pirate fleet from Alice Offsprings, and instead of proper names, they have faded numbers on their hulls. You wonder, uh, you wonder why you were told to come here. So, my choices are, you check to see if anything actually works in this watery junkyard, you tag the entrance to the base with paint, or, if you're the mechanic, which I am, you search for ground defense systems and try to turn them on. Mmm... Sounds like that would help the mutants, though. Or if I turn on the ground defense systems, would they activate against the mutants that are already around? Uh, yeah, probably the case. But, I mean, that one's special to the mechanics, so why not do it? All right, C-131. Oh, 131. You are the cartel's technical ace for a reason. The ships are wrecked, but the ground defense systems look good. One thing is particularly promising, a rocket battery in the western part of the harbor and its control center hidden in a, <clears throat> in a bunker close by. You activate the IFF system and change its setting. It's setting. Ah, uh, okay. Good. <clears throat> good, so we do get to target the mutants. We're changing the uh, IFF setting. Does that identify friend and foe? or whatever that stands for, something like that. Choose. You modify the system to identify ships typical for the cartel as friend and mutants, mutant barges as foe, yeah, C-158, 
Uh, you modify the system to identify the other way around. Ships typical for the cartel as foe and mutant barges as friend. Or you activate the self-destruct protocol. Well, yeah, I want to move the marker up a little bit. So let's identify cartel ships as friend and mutant barges as foe. C-158. Or the self-destruct also might be good. But hmm, yeah, let's do this. 158. Tech test. Okay, two green dice, and I have the Outback Bible if I need it. I do want to pass this because I need to move that off of four. Oh, there we go. Two. Got it. All right. Uh, success. You managed to program the IFF system correctly. You can hear the missiles moving into combat positions and the radar panels start to beat monotonously. Gain one experience. All right, haven't gotten any experience in a while. Up to two now. None of the enemies since the very first one have been worth anything. And move the dominance marker space up the track by one. All right. I like that better. It's back to its starting point. And that was it. Oh, so that was one action. And then... <coughs> Um, yeah, I said I was going to explore, and then next turn I'll probably explore again and then move over to here. Oh no, I also want to camp at some point. Um, yeah, no, next turn I'll explore. I want to camp. During my camp action, I can spend one, well, I can spend any number of meds to heal three wounds each, but eh, I don't want to waste the other one, or I can spend a med to, uh, take off one radiation, but I don't want to do that either. I have a rat out. All right. And then I can also use repair. Uh, my repair level is four, so I could do the shotgun and both damage to the vehicle, or I could do the, or I could do the shotgun and the vest. Ooh, actually that might be good. Or I can do the pain saw and one damage to the vehicle. I'm not worried about the vehicle. Um, kind of want the pain saw just in case. But it would be nice to have the shotgun and vest both working. Mm, tough choice. More than anything else, I just want to use the pain saw. All right, I'll do the pain saw and one damage to that. Now I definitely need fuel, but all right, that's the end of the round. So next round, uh, I'm gonna start off exploring. I am on highway. Yep, I'm on highway. One fuel. Uh, yeah, I think all the highways have usually been one or two fuel. When there's two fuel, there's always some bad thing, too. Um, I don't know. I'm going to draw one more. Maybe I can get two fuel. If it says something like, oh no, you have to place a threat marker there, eh, whatever. Oh. Nope, no fuel. One med and one damage to the vehicle. Oh, man. All right, bad choice. Should have taken the fuel. That's all right. I can explore during the next round. Um, well, camping again won't do any good. I could also repair the shotgun and the vest if I really want. Uh, or I can move here now. And I'll pick up one contamination. I don't know. Maybe camping again would be worth it. No, I'd rather wait until I get here. Because then if I camp, I can... Uh, I have meds. Again, I'm going to have more stuff to uh, heal. Yeah, let's wait. So I can heal and repair stuff. As long as I don't lose these in the meantime. Well, the vest, good chance I'll lose that. 
All right, uh, so it's, yeah, it's just four to get to here, one plus two plus one. And I do take a contamination or a contaminated wound. All right, so that's my second action. Oh, and I was sticking with that equipment. All right, so a new wasteland card for highway. Oops, that's two. Sky Corsair, I don't think I've seen that yet. Uh, this enemy ignores all non-ranged attacks and effects that deal damage. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, can only attack with ranged weapons. Only has three hit points, and it does a ranged attack with two green and a blue. Ooh. Well, I can take five damage before getting knocked out, and the best can block one. Uh, only has three hit points. I will get a gear card and fuel. Uh, that, that sounds good. I would love to get one more XP, but... Hmm. Uh, so if I attack with a shotgun, I get... Uh, what? A white and two greens? Yeah. Might do three damage. Okay. And then they're both ranged attacks, so these get resolved at the same time. Oh, and I have to spend an ammo. Ouch. Five. Well, yeah, I have to use my vest, otherwise I get knocked unconscious. And I'll definitely have to camp. All right, what do I get to do? Ah, two. Darn. Too bad. So I don't get a gear or a fuel. And I take five damage minus I have to break the vest. I don't want to get knocked unconscious. So, well, vest is now discarded. Uh, that was one of the starting gear. Uh, that blocks only one, so I'm going to take four damage. So we'll just do a three and a one. It's all right. I'm not knocked out yet because I have seven health. So just have to camp. And I can spend these two meds to heal six. Well, it'll heal this five and flip this over to red. That's why I do that. All right, well, too bad I couldn't kill the Corsair. That's all right. had some good rolls earlier in killing stuff. All right, so that's uh, both my actions. Round's over, so now it's down to two. But it's going to go up again as soon as I do this one. I have lots of time to get over here. Yeah, maybe I should do lots of camping and exploring and... just in case I need some stuff for here, but I hopefully don't have to fight Golfer. Golfer hasn't come out yet. Okay, so now I have my two actions again. Definitely camping for one of them. I'm gonna use my two meds. So, well, I can heal three, five, six. So I still have one damage there, and then I also get to use repair. Uh, so I don't have the vest anymore. Well, so I get to repair the shotgun and do two repair to the truck. Oh yeah, since each repair repairs one. A couple of the vehicles, or at least one of the vehicles, it takes two repair to repair one chassis. Alright, so that was one action, camping, and then, hmm, actually, maybe I should uh, explore and do this next turn, and then I can move and or explore in addition to doing that. What does it take to get here? If I go the shortest route, no, I don't have to go through that. Mountains are there, just can't go through crater. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, no, I can go through there. Shortest route would be one, two, three, four, five, six. That would be two radiation, which is all right because I have rad out. I could end up here. Discard at any time except in combat. So I think. Hmm. Because if I move here, I pick up the radiation. Can I use this before the combat starts? 
I don't think I can. Because that would put me up to three radiation, which would mean I couldn't heal. Well, that's fine. I can't heal during combat. As soon as combat's over, then I would use this and get rid of all the radi radiation, but I'll also lose one die. Eh, it'll be one white die. Uh, okay. So I can get to there in one turn without any fuel. Um, yeah, let's explore. So I am still on highway. Ooh. That's odd. One fuel, one fuel, one med, two damage to the vehicle. Why doesn't it just say two fuel, one med, two damage to the vehicle? That's weird. Um, yes. And now that I have fuel, I can use a pain saw because I don't have any ammo for the shotgun. I also get a med. So let's swap in the pain saw and two damage to the vehicle. Yeah, that's weird. Why doesn't it just say two fuel? Maybe, maybe this is a misprint and it was supposed to say one fuel, one ammo, one med. That's probably why it says 111. Or in this order, one ammo, one fuel, one med. Um, hmm. You know, yeah, I'm going to, well, nah, I'll just do what it says. No. Nah. I'm going to assume this was a misprint, and that should say ammo, which is not as good for me because I want to use the pain saw now. And now I only have one fuel for the pain saw instead of two. So since I think that's a misprint, I'll take the one that's worse for me, because that's well, generally what it says to do. <clears throat> if you're not sure about something and need to make a choice, it said do whatever's worst for you because everything's grim here in Apocalypse Australia. All right. Uh, so that was that was both my actions. Okay, now it's down to one. Um, order doesn't really matter here. I can explore first and then do the plot token. That'll go up to three, but then my turn would end. It'll go down to two. Well, I'm going to move here, then move here. So yeah, it's fine. Let's do the plot one first, just in case. But it could have something silly like your turn ends. Or you don't get to, yeah, your turn ends. All right, so one action is plot point five. All right, Book of Tales, we go to 55. Either you're too far south or your superiors in New Sydney really suck at recon. Probably. You find yourself in Arid Inn, a place looking like a mix of a summer resort and a biker rally. Mutants are lying on the beach close to a building complex that decades ago was, used to be a logistics center or a huge shopping mall. While they're sunbathing and sipping neon drinks from dirty mugs, travelers, gang members, and pioneers are crowded in a few joints and bars. Here, no one thinks about the war being fought on the other side of the continent. Resolve the proper entry depending on the position of the dominance marker on the track. Or if you're the slasher, no matter what, you do entry 111. I am not the slasher. Uh, space 4 through 7. Yep, no one's dominant right now. C22. Maybe that's... No, this is not when Golfer came out. Okay, 22. No one's dominant. You don't understand why the cartel sent you to this place. Is it about a secret ingredient of the pink drink? <laughs> or maybe about reminding the resting officers of the mutant army that life is not all cakes and ale. Choose. A moment of relax far from prying eyes is what you need. Okay. You start a classic bar fight. All right. Or you buy everyone around and make some friends. Well, I'm going to need resources for that or gear to in or something. I only have one fuel, one med, one ammo. 
So I'm going to buy everyone a round of drinks. I probably don't have the resources for it, so that might end up poor. Uh, that might not end up well. You start a classic bar fight. Okay. Mm. That might increase the uh, cartel's dominance. I don't know. Uh, plus, I might have to fight. Um, I get two dice for for my blade skill, which is melee attacks. Um, or relax, far from prying eyes. Sure, let's just relax. Why not? I'm curious as to what happens if I relax. In order to avoid stepping on someone's toes or revealing your true reasons for visiting this part of the waste, you set up a makeshift screen on the beach. It'll protect you from the wind <clears throat> and nosy neighbors. Then you simply relax. You may perform one free camp action. Um, I have nothing to repair. I'm on the vehicle a little bit. I could use a med to heal one health. What are the other camp actions? Trading with other knights that are on the same space as you. Oh, and I resolve the plot. This should go up. Alright. Um, yeah, what's the other? Am I missing anything camping? You can heal. You can repair. Use card effects. Okay, yeah, like I could use the rat out card if I really wanted. Although, I don't need to, uh, don't need to be camping for that, uh, and upgrade. Yeah. No, I don't get it. Well, I guess I'll repair, because I don't want to waste meds on one health. So, I guess I'll use repair, but the only thing to repair is vehicle. So I could waste two of the repair, but I don't have nothing else to do. All right. One more action, I'm going to explore some more. One fuel, place a threat marker on your space. Yeah, this time I'll take the fuel and not risk it. Okay, two fuel. Like that for my pain saw, I can use it twice. And <clears throat> yeah, I'm not going to be using any fuel to get there because I'm gonna spend two turns getting there. That, oh, and I need a threat marker on here, which just means now anybody that moves to this space has to take a threat token, but nobody else is going to move there, so no problem. All right, next round, timer goes down to two. Um, yeah, I'm going to move first, because <clears throat> I can move. If anything bad happens, I'll camp and heal and do that. Or, if nothing bad happens, I can just um, explore some more. All right, so yeah, I'm going to go 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. I will pick up two radiation. That is going to hurt me in a fight. I'll lose a die. Uh, but it'll just be a white one. I'll have the two red dice for the pain saw if I have to fight. So yeah, all right, that's fine. So yeah, it's 1, 2, 3, 4. Pick up two radiation. If I picked up any more radiation, it would be a contaminated wound instead of radiation. But rat out's going to wipe all this out, but currently I cannot heal, and yeah, whenever I roll, I lose a die. Oh, and I also got a contaminated wound. Yep, two radiation and a contaminated wound. And now I have to draw a wasteland card for the desert. Oh, encounter A. Got another one of these. Okay. Good, get to do rare stuff, because, I mean, the deck's fairly big, and unless there are multiple ones that say, I mean, I got E already, unless there are multiple ones that say encounter E, encounter A, you know, like there are three copies of this card in the deck, unless that's the case, you're not very likely to come across these. So, yeah, nice. Get to do rare stuff. A, I see two. Okay, what does two say? Two. Ooh. Traveling the road to ruin, you encounter a friend from the good old days. Ooh, sounds good. When going through the Badlands, um, was motivated by your adventurous spirit, not tedious duty. 
resolve the proper entry. If I'm the mechanic, I get to do 34. There's 34. You encounter Dr. Fang. That's one of the other heroes. Can't use it on him on this uh, adventure, though. You encounter Dr. Fang, an old friend from New Sydney who, just like you, had his own surgery. Wait, I had surgery? Where? I don't know. Maybe some of this stuff is actually bolted on. Who knows? Uh, Dr. Fang, though, has... Uh, I don't know. All right. <clears throat> Anyway, he says that the mercenary gang started taking over poorer districts of the metropolis, and the cartel allowed them to treat the inhabitants with increasing brutality. Fang had to flee the city when he helped a sick mutant. Choose. <laughs> you silence Fang. Spreading such rumors is no good for the cause. Um, so that this will probably move up. You recollect good old times when life was easier. Okay, or you suggest that mutants from the West will need medical expertise. Well, that'll move this down. I'm closer to this one. I do not want to move that down. I don't really want to move it up either. I like where it is. How about we recollect good old times when life was easier? Although, silencing Fang, maybe I get some resources or some gear. No, I just want to keep that thing where it is. So, 119. Well, recollect good old times when life was easier. 119. Both of you share similar experience. Uh, both of you are happy that you don't have... No. No? That's weird. Both of you share similar experience. Both of you are happy that you don't have to see New Sydney in the hour of its downfall. Uh, okay. That should be two sentences. Though you know not what the future holds, you're enjoying this move, Excuse me, this moment and you're meeting on the trail. Ah, you may perform one free camp action. Uh, all right. Well, I guess I'll use my med because it does cost three. One, two, three to heal that. So there's my camp action. You could use more than one med at a time. It's just earlier it would have been a waste to use more than one. Okay, free camp action. All right, I'm feeling pretty good. I think I'll finally uh, complete this easy adventure. Didn't have to fight anybody. Oh, am I not gonna get to use the pain saw? Oh, that'll be a bummer. Um, yeah, moving there was one action. I didn't move that. My little coins I'm using as markers for that. I'm rereading the book. I found out what these are for. You get an upgrade card. Sometimes you have to use these. All right. Um, so that was it for that action. Oh. Now that I'm not in combat or anything like that, well, now that I'm free to do this, I'm going to use Rat Out. Discard this to heal three radiation. Oh, whoops. Oh, whoa, whoa. I couldn't heal while I had the radiation. So the camp action, I couldn't do that yet. I'm going to have to actually camp if I want to uh, perform that. So the camp action, uh, there was really nothing I could do. There's nothing to repair, and I couldn't heal. Well, I could use my med to get rid of one of the radiation, but I didn't want to do that. Although I think in performing... Um, I don't know, maybe in performing the camp action during that, you know what? I probably could use this during the camp action. I'm not in combat. It says discard at any time except in combat. So... No, I think I could do it then. So we'll say I did. I mean, it makes sense. If I'm performing a camp action, I'm just resting and not doing anything. Why can't I use my radiation meds at that point? It's only reasonable. Um, okay. Well, I can't move again. There's no point in camping, so let's explore. I'm in desert now. 
One ammo and one damage. I don't need ammo anymore. I don't have a... Oh, no, I still have a shotgun. Mm, no. I'll use my Exploration 2 to draw one more, but I'm stuck with this one unless I spend fuel. One med, one ammo, and one car damage. Yeah, all right, that's fine. What was the other one? One ammo, so, yeah. The vehicle gets damaged instead of me, and I also get a med. Don't really need it. All right, uh, that was both my actions, so now, well, this is the final turn. <clears throat> Just have to move there, resolve a wasteland card, and then I can do the plot point. Um, whoops, that's in the wrong pile. There we go. All right, final turn. First thing I'm going to do is, okay, I'm going to stick with the paint saw as move. only takes two to move there with my four movement, so now I get a scrub wasteland card. Ooh, Tasmanian Devil. Threat two. And I still had the pain saw equipped because I wanted to use it. But, um, oh, this is a ranged, ranged attack. Oh, I guess it has some electric stuff coming off of it. All right. Yeah, it's not biting you. I'll get a gear card if I'm successful in killing it, which I should be. I only have to do two damage, and I'm using the pain saw. Um, but threat two, so I have to draw two threat tokens. So what do we get? Oh, he gets an extra white die, and we'll deal one extra damage. Okay. Uh, so he gets two whites and a green. That's really not that bad for threat tokens. And he has a ranged attack, so yeah, I couldn't even with a shotgun, I couldn't prevent him from attacking. So I'm using the pain saw, and it says you can spend one fuel to gain two red dice. If I didn't use the fuel, I would be getting three white dice. One from the pain saw and two from my blade skill. Which, eh. Might kill him, might not. With two red dice, it's almost assuredly going to happen, especially since I can reroll one botch. Everything else is going to do damage. What does the spade do? Two damage. Yeah. I mean, the only way I don't kill him, and then I also get two white dice. Oh, and one from the pain saw. Very low chance of not killing him. The only way to not kill him is if I get two botches on these and then reroll one and it's another botch and yeah and only one damage total I mean yeah that's not gonna happen whatever all right um, these, are, these get resolved at the same time all right so Tasmanian Devil is doing two plus one so three damage and I get one two three and this is worth two from the pain saw so that's five Nothing else that happens there, and I didn't roll any botches, so I don't have to break this. Well, I'd get to re-roll one first. Okay, um, so I get the reward, one gear card, and I take three damage. Or I get three wounds. All right, so my reward is just a gear card. Ooh, frag grenade, that sounds nice. Advance. Roll two blue dice and apply their result. If you obtain double botch, one in 36 chance, but I'd get to uh, re-roll one of them. Uh, suffer one damage. Okay. Ooh. Nice. Um, two blue dice. Blue dice are pretty good. They're just not quite as good as red dice because they don't have a three on there. Well, they have two twos and two ones instead of a one, a two, instead of two ones, a two, and a three. Yeah, really it just has, that's the only difference between these two, that one side. So blue dice are still pretty good. Uh, and this, you don't have to have equipped, it's a grenade. 
and advance, you use that in between range attacks and melee attacks. Which you could do, if you're going to do a melee attack, you would use that beforehand, or if you do a ranged attack, then you can use this afterward. But before they get a melee attack. Ooh. What if this is working? Advanced, to well, you get to roll two red dice. And then either way, this gets discarded. So it's single use, but it's two red dice if it's working, two blue dice if it's not, if it's broken. Eh, it's good either way. I mean, unless I had nothing else to repair, I don't think that would be worth repairing just to get two reds instead of two blues. That being said, if I'd had the frag grenade and the pain saw when I fought golfer last night, could have killed him. Uh, I took my damage. All right. Okay, that was one action, and uh, well, since I have to do this on this turn, the other action better be plot point six. And golfer never made an appearance, so I don't think I'll have to fight. If I do have to fight, yeah, pain saw and frag grenade, I can deal some major damage. That'll be two reds and two blues and three whites to roll. That would be big. All right, so what are we doing? 65. You finally reach the true mutant capital, Carcassville. Everything around here reminds you that you're just an ordinary human. From the dank air of the city, erected on platforms floating on uh, mangrove swamps, to its weird inhabitants. You can perform one free camp action. All right. Um, I can heal or I can repair my frag grenade. Yeah, I'd rather heal because I have one med left. So that'll heal three wounds. Then resolve the proper entry depending on the situa situation of the game. If special card number nine is in the game, C-102. That was golfer. Nope. Otherwise, C-121. All right, 121. You directly ask about someone who's calling the shots around here. Mutants laugh in your face and tell you to go to the stadium, cleared in the jungle. Wait, am I reading the... Oh, no. It says take card number nine. Oh, I'm still going to have to do golfer. All right. I was going to say, wait, I thought this is what I read last time. Uh, this is the right one, right? Yeah, 102 is if golfer's already out there. Okay. C121. Um, as you approach the place, you see a monstru monstrous mutant whose bald head is sticking out above the trees. The beast takes a swing with a street lantern ripped from a highway shoulder and hits a wrecked field kitchen, shouting, Four! It flies in a wide arc, spitting fire and lands a few dozen meters away. I swear that's what I read last time. Did I read the wrong one before? No. It just has almost the same text. All right, take card number nine from the special deck and place it face up next to the plot sheet. This is Golfer, the general of the Free Mutants Army, and the mastermind behind Operation Directed Against New Sydney. And then go to nine. Resolve the proper entry depending on the position of the dominance marker on the track. It's still in four to seven, so C52, or if you're the stalker, and you poison, oh yeah, no, this is the same as, yeah, this is the same as before. But it was on space 8 through 10 before, and that's where I had to fight him, or, well, I could negotiate, but I had horrible negotiation skill with whatever character. Um, all right, so we go to 52, and then I'll get the golfer out at some point. 52. You're not quite sure what you're doing here and how the hell you've walked into such deep shit. You must have been traveling your own road to ruin for a very long time. And now you know it's a dead end. When you look at Golfer, your whole life flashes before your eyes. Hmm. Choose. There's no turning back now. Time to kill this mutated spawn, C-67. I think this is basically the same as before, too, except um, maybe it's going to be a little different. But these are the same options, although maybe not the same uh, entries to go to if you choose these options. All right, so time to kill this mutated spawn, which I could. So last time what happened was whatever the level, he has 15 hit points. All right, let me get him out. Special card, nine. 
He has 15 hit points, and what happened was whatever level you were on the track, you subtract that from his health. So he'd have 10. Oof. Which were two red dice, two blue dice, and three white dice. <sighs> Including the frag and grenade. Maybe I could do 10 damage. Um, spades are worth two. I can reroll one botch. On the frag grenade, spades wouldn't be worth anything. Um, mm, that would be close. So I don't think I should just attack him. I should choose one of the other options. I don't want to chance it. The other options are, well, although I don't know if 67 is going to do the same thing as before, where it subtract five from his health. I don't know. Other option, you don't even blink, giving golfer your most intimidating stare instead. Okay. Or communication is crucial. You negotiate with a giant mutant. Uh, you negotiate, I get a white and a green. And I still have um, Outback Bible, so I could re-roll twice. Just not in combat. Break this card to re-roll any of your dice. Yeah, I get two re-rolls, so negotiating, maybe I should go with negotiation. Yeah, I'm going to try negotiating. So go to 17. Looking golfer in the eyes, you decide once again to play. You decide once again to play the game you've played so many times in the Badlands. It's a game of bluff and luck. You know that your foe is just as skilled, and none of you is hiding an ace up his sleeve. Test negotiate five. All right. Well, all right. You obtain. Great. I need five successes. You obtain one additional success for each gear card you have with a value of at least three. Okay. Um, pain saw? Oh, that's the only one. So I get one success. Mm -hmm. And one additional success for every three experience you have. I have two. Great. Uh, I need four. Man. <laughs> Not a good choice. But I do have Outback Bible, so I can reroll dice twice. Still not very good odds. Okay. All right, so I need four successes. I get one because of that. Ah, oh, now I kind of wish, no, Repair Kit was only worth two. This is the only thing I've, yeah, that's the only thing that I've had an option of having so far that was worth more than two. We really could have used one more experience. That would make things a lot easier. Yeah. All right, well, I'll break this so I can reroll both of these. Well, I have to, now I have to uh, discard it, and I can reroll these again. Yeah, one, well, I mean, I guess I didn't get any twos in all those rules, so it wouldn't have mattered, but yeah, one more experience would have really helped. <sighs> Failure. C-159, which is going to be game over. Uh, you must have spoken one word too many when you tried to dissuade Golfer from attacking New Sydney. Unfortunately, you also unwittingly betrayed some crucial information about the cartel's military capabilities. The hulking, mute, the hulking mutant smiled mockingly and made his trademark swing, shouting, Four! The last thing you remember is the picturesque aerial view of Carcassville. I was expecting, like, if my negotiation failed, then I'd have to fight him. Not just, oh, your negotiation fails, you lose. Oh, man. <laughs> All right, well, that's three failures on this one. Uh, out of curiosity... Uh, if I'd gotten to use Pain Saw, Frag Grenade, if I'd chosen to fight him. Just curious as to how much damage I would have done. Ooh, that was a pretty good roll. Ten. And if if choosing to fight him, it was a, if it was the same thing as before, where it was uh, you know, subtract this from his health, I would have just barely made it and defeated him. Oh, well. That's not what I chose. Oh, now I have to do this a fourth time. 
Unless I go on to another adventure. Um, this is still fun, though. Uh, because, well, even though I failed three times, I got to uh, explore new things. Hmm. Here's what I'm thinking. If I get this one again, because I'm going to pick a random character and random vehicle again. Well, I guess I didn't quite pick a random vehicle last time. But if I'm going to pick a random character again, if I get this route, I am going to try to appease the mutants and see what happens. Although it could just be if the mutants gain power, it's game over. Who knows? All right. So let's see. And that's starting gear. Okay, there's all the starting gear. Uh, it's just to shuffle everything else. All right, well, that's annoying. <laughs> I want to try one of the adventures that isn't uh, solo. Uh, for all the other adventures, there are two to four players. Although most of them, you can play them solo by just playing two knights. Although I guess technically you could do four. I'm going to do two. And then there are two of the adventures where they're competitive, so there is no, you can't play them by yourself. Because you do have to hide information from the other people and stuff like that. So, eh. I mean, oh, I think I said I could just pretend to, I could just play schizophrenically and uh, try to be two people. But, no. So, yeah, I think there are five more adventures I can do that are uh, cooperative. Have to get through this one first, though. Well, I mean, I don't have to, but I want to get through this one first. All right, red side, face up. Oh, shoot. The ones I just shuffled in, some of them were on the green side. All right, well, I'll just say, if I, if I get one on the green side, I know to uh, rip it over. I don't want to go through the whole deck and then try to shuffle those again. I'll do that later. Oh, what time is it? Because I am going to end a little early, but no, I still have lots of time. These have to be shuffled back into their decks. So I kind of feel like I should just not shuffle in case I'm going down here again, because as soon as I get to here, I'll have to uh, take out the cards and reshuffle these for um, Nailburn Beauties and Alice's Outcasts. Yeah, whatever. <sighs> All right, attempt number four. And maybe I'll get another character. Well, I have a 50% chance of, if I get a random character, getting one of the ones I haven't used yet that you can use on this mission. Actually, I guess this is a big enough deck. Let's just do normal. Eh. I thought I was looking so good too. Didn't have any wounds or any malfunctions. That was the first time I was, had any of that happen. Had great weapons. But yeah, like I said, I thought negotiation, if that failed, I would have to fight. What was the other option? You give them your intimidating stare? Oh yeah, that was the other one. You give him an intimidating stare. I wonder what that would do. Probably just kills you. You don't get to do anything. No, that would be silly. All right, aspiration cards, and then um, then I'm ready to go. This is going to be at two again, and this will start at five or six, depending on what character I get. All right, I'm not going to read the intro again. I've read it three times. OK. 
Okay, uh, characters. Vehicles. Okay, there are the six that can be used on this adventure. So I'll just get out my dice that aren't part of the game and just to choose a random one. Alright, I'm going to choose the third character and the third vehicle. Oh, Alinta. Spirit Warrior. Okay, that's another one I haven't used yet. Okay, Horrible with Guns. So, melee weapons for her. Unless I find a really good gun. Uh, and Great with Aid, Horrible with Tech. Pretty good at survival and negotiating. Oh, and what's her special ability? After making your melee roll, you may, if you want, suffer one wound to deal one additional damage. Once per roll. Alright. Okay. Uh, she has seven health. She only has two repair. Yeah. So she's not very good at that. She has three exploration. Excuse me. Okay. All right. Well, that's who I'm going to be this time. I think. I think she's going to get the northern route. <clears throat> Which the one time I got the northern route, that was the first, very first time trying. Um, Instead of getting killed by golfer, it was right when I got to the end, before I could actually do the last plot point. Uh, I had to fight something when I got there, and that gave me another injury, and that killed me. So, this could be another failure, just because I don't ha know what to expect when I get to the pumps. Alright, so the third vehicle would be the ATV. Ooh, it has movement 5. That could come in handy. Uh, this is a light vehicle, but you can treat it as um, if it is medium instead of light when resolving effects. Uh, so when something says, do this if it's a light vehicle, do this if it's medium, you can choose light or medium. All right, it only has four capacity. So it can only put four pieces of gear in there. Ooh, it, it has a small tank. It can only hold two fuel. And each fuel gives you two extra movement. All right, five chassis. That's the biggest limi limiting factor, only two fuel. Okay, <clears throat> that's what I'm going with this time. Why not? Ooh, let's read her bio. Alinta, Alinta. Looks like she's going Braveheart style. Oh, not quite. Doesn't have half of her face painted. It's uh, ver vertically and horizontally a bar going across. Alinta is, a, is living proof that a native, excuse me, that the native inhabitants of Australia are slowly getting back what's theirs. She is a powerful fighter and a healer well-versed in traditional ways of Aborigine people and surprisingly close with the spirits of the land who awoke after the scourge. Alinta is an outcast from her own tribe, rebellious and tainted by those who destroyed our world, at least in the eyes of most elders. On one hand, they need her as a person who speaks the name of those without voice. On the other hand, they despise her whenever she comes to the sacred lands with her blasphemy blasphemous devices and defiant tattoos. What device is like her little teddy bear right there? I don't see devices. Oh, there's a light bulb on the end of this pole, it looks like. There you go, there's a device. All right. Okay, so that's who I'm going to use this time, and um, so Book of Tales says, it says fourth time's the charm. Um, if you're a mechanic, slasher, or the stalker, C50, that was the bottom route, yeah, Avenger, that was the one I had before, the Spirit Warrior, or the Trailblazer, C100. So I'll be going across the northern route starting here, oh, I need her mini. I mean, don't really ever could use any of them, but if I'm playing solo, it doesn't matter. And I don't really need the base at all, but yeah, whatever. Even though it's solo, she's playing as the blue character. All right, there she is. I'm 
she's going to start there at gangrene. She just call it gangrene. <laughs> she starts at gangrene. All right. 100. all the plot tokens. Oh, I guess I'll read it. Why not? Ever since the Gangrene Miners Union was founded in the bustling settlements <clears throat> in the northern part of the con continent, the Western Company, a powerful mining operation controlling most excavations, sites, and refineries in Western Australia, has been losing money. Its board is forced to meet with union members and heed their increasingly peculiar demands. Lack of agreement always means another strike. First successes in negotiations have emboldened GMU. Now the miners fight not only for pay rises or less work hours. Uh, they knock at the company's door whenever they come up with a crazy idea. Oh, so I was just thinking, now that I know that, well, even keeping this in the middle, if you're on the south track, golfer still came out, although maybe something would have prevented him from coming out when I got to Carcassville. It would have been nice to have this at 10. Then he would have only had 5 health, and then, yeah, I definitely would have done... Pain saw, frag grenade, and it would have been an easy kill. Would have only had to do five damage. Anyway. Well, now I know for later. And knowing's half the battle. Uh, do, do, do. Uh, where was I? Canteen meat uh, that doesn't trigger response from your Geiger counter. Well equipped clubhouses, coal allotments. Um, oh, those are the uh, crazy demands they have. Having had enough, the company board have decided to automate the mining processes, especially that they heard rumors, especially that they heard rumors about something unique in pumps, the last exi existing model of Comb Mine ZX, a huge mining machine that can easily replace most workers from gangrene. This would also be the end of the unions. However, in order to start off the Comb Mine ZX, they'll need a daredevil willing to travel along the north coast find the missing parts, hire mechanics necessary for the machine servicing, and eventually bring the metal beast to gangrene. Then the golden age of open pit mining shall return. All right, so place the um, plot tokens, and then we do wild north this time instead of trouble in the south. Plot token 1 goes on 25, plot token 2 goes on 22, plot token 3 goes on 0, 4 is on Queen's Valley, 6 is on pumps, and 5 is on, is it on 4? Yeah. All right. Okay, and yeah, I didn't want to read. Road to Ruin again. I've done that enough times. Wild North this time. All right. Place your night figure on gangrene. Timer markers on two. It moves down the track each round. Uh, do special marker. If I'm Spirit Warrior, it goes on six. So the dominance marker. Uh, represents the power struggle in Northern Australia between Gangrene, Miners Union, and the Western Company. I think it was GMU, Western Company. Resolve the proper entry depending on which night you are, Spirit Warrior. I get to do 90. And then, just like the South one, if well, I, I need to do all the plot tokens and then, well, see what happens when I get to pumps. And. If I ever have two malfunctions on the vehicle or two injuries to myself, it's game over. And you can't get rid of those in a city in this adventure. All right, 90. Nope. Okay, lots of stuff to read. Nowadays, every tribal aborigine community anoints its spirit warrior. Those honored with the title are trained from childhood in personal combat, survival, and taking advantage of everything the Outback has to offer. After undergoing, <clears throat> after undergoing secret initiation rites, 
The chosen ones start their pilgrimage through the waste. They are tasked with traveling between Aborigine settlements and providing all necessary help. Additionally, spirit warriors pass important, me important messages and crucial news from the road between tribes. As you repeatedly fell into disfavor with the elders of your tribe by criticizing their traditional ways of life, you were finally banished to Gangreen, a hellhole in the north. Charged with care for Aborigine miners laboring in that godforsaken place. You've spent, you've spent, typo, the last few weeks patching up your wounded tribesmen and listening to their problems. It seems the main topic is the workforce reduction in the mines. People say that, uh, people say that the board of the Western Company can no longer stand the recently founded Gangrene Miners Union, and plans to autom uh, and plans to automatize excavation. If this goes through, lots of people will lose their jobs, and the indigenous Australians will surely be the first victims of this change. You decided to check the rumors, and soon accepted a mission from the Western Company to restore a huge mining machine called Comb Mine ZX. Your superiors promised that if you do well, your tribesmen will no longer need to worry about their jobs. Okay, all right, set up. Uh, choose one of the following gear card sets, barbed wire club and vest, or barbed wire club, knife, and trash armor. And then on the vehicle, I get three meds, one ammo, and two fuel. Well, I won't have, won't need the ammo anytime soon. I don't have any guns, whichever choice I make. Uh, three meds, two fuel on the vehicle. So it's currently, that's all it can have. Any fuel I find right now, I don't get to keep. All right, so barbarian, barbed wire club and vest or club, knife, and trash armor. All right, let's see. Oh, and then I just go back to wild boy. I don't know, haven't seen the barbed wire club yet. So I can choose trash armor, which is like the vest, except when it's working, it only blocks one damage, and then when it's broken, it blocks one damage. I guess it's only worth one. Vest is two when it's working, one when it's broken. I can take a knife and... Well, I can have just the barbed wire club and the vest, or barbed wire club, barbed wire club, knife, and trash armor. All right, let's see. Ooh, barbed wire club, two green. Ooh, I would get to roll four greens with this. Once per combat, you may re-roll any of your dice. If you do, break this card after combat. Yeah. Okay. And it only costs one to repair. Okay, that's not bad. Then you go down to two white dice. And you can still do that again. You can, once per combat, re-roll any of your dice. If you do, discard this after combat. Uh, okay. Hmm. So, vest and barbed wire club, or do I also want the knife? Knife. And they start working. Uh, knife. Advance. Discard this to deal one damage. So you can throw the knife, and then you don't have it anymore. Or if you're just doing normal attack with it, you get two white dice rather than two green. Uh, same thing on the back, except it's one white die. All right. So do I want the knife in addition to the barbed wire club, just so I have two weapons? And then trash armor. Or would I rather have the vest? I think I'd rather have the vest and the barbed wire club. All right, that's my starting gear. All right, and then, uh, yeah, I think play through this, success or failure, that's probably when I'm, when I'm gonna stop because it's hockey time. Well, it will be. Ending early for the first game of the season. All right, Wild North. Mm. Yeah, nothing special here. Oh, and the plot tokens. Whatever plot token it is, and then a three. And then eh, maybe I'll get the get these uh, special um, encounters. We'll see. As I said, though. 
decks are pretty big. Oh, actually, I bet each deck has A, B, C, D, E, whatever there are. So I guess there are two opportunities maybe in each one. Or one opportunity here, one opportunity in the other deck. So I could be wrong. I don't know. I haven't really looked through all the cards in there. I <laughs> didn't want to spoil surprises. But I guess when I sleeved the cards, I had no idea what these A, B, C, D things meant. Actually, I won't be going anywhere up there. I'm just going to move this over here. Okay. All right, Alenta, let's finally succeed at this. This is one-handed? Yes. So I can equip one other weapon as long as it's only one-handed. The pain saw was two-handed. All right. Well, all right, so I need to get to here. And I can't go through crater, so I have to go around it. And it's two, three, four, five to get to there. Going through all that. Or to try to get around stuff. I don't want radiation already. That would be three threat tokens. Ugh. Or it's one, I'm sorry, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine to just go through the one. Mm. Or it's eight to go through that one and skip that one. So I could, I could take two turns to get here, and then I don't have to use any fuel. Or actually, if I use both fuel, oh, no, I have five movement. I forgot I have five on this one. Oh, okay, so it's if I used both fuel, I could actually get there in one turn and only go through one threat token. Hmm. You know what? I might do that. Well, and how much does it take to get to there? It's one, two, three, four, five. If I skip that, yeah. If I go this route, I can get there in one turn without traveling through anything bad. Hmm. I think this five is going to come in handy. All right. So you know what? Let's do that. All right. So first action is going to be move. I'm going to spend both fuel already. So I get nine movement. So yes, it was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And I'm going through one threat token. Well, one threat marker, so I get a threat token. All right, um, so the wasteland card I draw, I'm on mountains. So if it's an event card or an encounter card, I will um, have minus one success on any roll. Mm. Ooh, if it's an enemy, they get ambush. So they'll attack me first no matter what, which I'm, I only have melee weapons, so I guess ambush really doesn't matter. Well, other than if they have a melee attack and they knock me out, I don't get a fight back. But yeah, whatever. I don't care about that. It's not bothering me at all. All right. Um, oh, yes. But I was going to do one thing first. I need to note in the Outback Chronicle that... Um, what's her name? Zoe got killed. Ah, Nelly was the name last night. First it was Logan, then it was Nelly. All right, Zoe killed by golfer. Okay, so Road to Ruin again, and this time it is uh, Alinta. So ambush or the other one? Well, it's an attack, so ambush. Dreadnought, that's a tank. How am I gonna kill a tank with a barbed wire club? Threat one, I have to draw another threat token. Oh, oh, it says this enemy cannot gain ambush, so nope, the ambush doesn't do anything. Oh, whoa, green, blue, and red? This does not look good. It has nine hit points. 
Um, um, that is armor piercing. Is that what that is? That's not on here, is it? No. Yes, your enemy gains the armor piercing trait. So my vest can't block anything. Throwing stuff around. All right, so the ambush. Nope, we cannot gain ambush. But it has armor piercing. Uh, and it's a ranged attack, so it's going to be uh, attacking me before I get a chance to fight back. <sighs> Engagement. This enemy suffers X damage. X is equal to your repair. Oh, okay. But my repair is only two, so it only has seven health. On a sp well, okay, on a spade, this enemy deals two damage and your vehicle suffers one damage. Oh, ugh. You get three ammo and uh, three experience if you can kill it. This one's horrible. But seven damage, I'll get four green dice. I have a tiny chance of success. I mean, I need three twos and a one. And at least a one. Uh, what does a spade do? Anything? No. But you can re-roll. So without breaking this to re-roll, well, I have a... I have a little lower than one in 300 chance of defeating it. But it also could knock me out, and I don't even get to fight back. It gets a green, a blue, and a red. That was a terrible enemy. Okay, so yeah, armor piercing. I can't block anything with the vest. All right, so it does a ranged attack, so it gets to attack before I do. Six. Ugh. Since it didn't knock me out, well, all right, I get to fight back, but I have almost no chance of defeating it. Like I said, one in 300. Uh, 1 in 324. I did 2 damage. I could re-roll dice if I want, but no. So, alright. I did not defeat it. I took 6 damage. I don't get any rewards. Oh, you suck, Dreadnought. Alright, well that was not a fun start. Okay, um, yeah, that was fun. Shoot, do I need a camp already so I can heal? I can camp and heal, and then next turn I can do this and move or explore. Mm. This is where I got that communicator last time, which has batteries, and you need to move quickly after that. That's right. I wasn't thinking about that. Kind of maybe I need that fuel. Um, so when I do this, I want that to be the first action of a turn, so I can also move that same turn. I think I need to still have power when I get to Queen's Valley if I get the communicator. I think it still needs power when I get here, which would mean you have to get here in one turn and then there in one turn. Ugh. One, two, three, four, that takes seven. So I'll need one fuel to get from here to here, and then from here to here, the quickest route is three. Oh, you can get there in one turn easily. All right, so I do need some fuel at some point if I'm going to get the commu communicator and still have power when I get here. <sighs> All right. Um... Well, 
Well, if I explore, there's also, oh, I have three exploration, okay. If I explore, there's also a chance I get damage from that. I should probably camp. At least it didn't do any damage to my ATV. All right, so my other action is gonna be to camp. All I really get to do is I can spend two meds. Each one will heal three wounds. Okay, so that's it. Counter's down to one. When the next round starts, uh, so first action is going to be resolve the plot point. So that makes this go up two. And we read 13. Without full technical documentation about Comb Mines the X, no one in the waste will manage to turn on this giant machine. Not to mention disassembling it for transport or putting it back together. So it's probably good news that the Aborigines living around the Sacred Plateau store even store every single piece of paper they encounter in their travels. For a proper fee, they give you access to the so-called Eternal Repository, full of piles of all kinds of waste paper. Uh, so I can choose to go to the Eternal Repository to get the tec technical documentation. I won't pay a dime for some papers. You'll get them a different way. Or if I'm the spirit warrior that I am, uh, you decide to get the documentation and supplement your healing herbs by visiting a local shaman. Hmm. Okay, sure. That's That choice is only op, uh, available if you're Alinta, so I'll do that. 118. All right, what does that say? Spirit warriors provide help to indigenous communities, but can also count on it in need. You're recognized, and a few youngsters run away to assist you in your business here. Uh, maybe an hour later, you find a package full of dried herbs next to your ride. Gain one med. Okay. A white-haired aborigine wearing a flowing robe and a strange black top hat with a bullet hole is also waiting for you. This is the Grand Archivist of the Eternal Repository. He points at a box full of papers and says, You'll find everything inside, Alinta. Are you sure you trust the company men enough to give them this? Won't they cheat our hard-working brothers and sisters? All right, so choose. You aren't going to play any games. A deal's a deal. Note in the Outback Chronicles that you have the full documentation about Comb Mines the X and the Dominus Marker goes up one space. Or, the old man is right. It's better to make sure the company's position doesn't get too strong. Note that you have little data about Comb Mines the X and move the Dominus Marker down one space. Um, so I'm working for the company. Do I want to help them out or screw them over? I mean, I'm going to where, isn't the, I think I'm going to where the company is. I don't know. Uh, last time I tried doing things for the company. Yeah, why not? <clears throat> My people don't like me anyway, so who cares what happens to them? Uh, that's, that's what Alinta's thinking. All right, so we're going to say, we do have full documentation, so this goes up one, and I have to document that I have full documentation of the Comb Mine ZX in the Outback Chronicle. All right. Okay, that was the first action. Um, I can move up here, or I can do some exploring, because uh, I do need some fuel. Well, I don't need fuel until I'm here. Uh, you know what, let's explore this turn, so I can do lots of exploring. I'll explore this turn, explore the next turn. Oh, I'm in the mountains, I don't know if I'm gonna find any fuel. All right, so my other action was exploring, but if I don't like what I get, I can redraw up to a total of three cards. Mountain, ooh, ammo, fuel, but I get radiation. Hmm. I do need, what do I need, two fuel when I come over here? Just one, two, well, if I want to avoid that, it's two, well, it'll be eight if I avoid that, or seven if I go through this. But 
Gladly a threat token and a contaminated wound. I don't need the ammo at all. So really, well, unless I find a gun somewhere. So really, it's mainly one fuel for one radiation. Eh. I have exploration three, so I have two more chances to get something good. One ammo? No, I don't want one ammo. All right, well, I'm stuck with this one, unless I spend fuel, but I don't have fuel. Ah, one fuel. Okay, I'll take that. Well, I have to take that, but that's good. All right, one fuel. Okay, so that was my last action for the turn. So the round's now over. Next round, down to two on the time marker. Um, well, I have one fuel. That's enough. I could find some somewhere else along the way. You know, let's go ahead and... Oh, no, no. I want to activate this. That needs to be the first thing I do. Uh, let's go ahead and move first on this turn. So, yeah, it's one, two, three, four, five. So, going this route, I have five movements, so I can get there without spending any fuel and no, no danger things. Now, draw a card for the mountains again. Stupid dreadnought. Gun tower. Right, well, at least this only has three. All right, it has armor piercing, so my vest can't be used to block any damage. Once per combat, this enemy rerolls one die that deals no damage. Okay, so green, blue, and white. Oh, what it is going to roll? Uh, I get I get two ammo for defeating it. Really? That's it. I don't need ammo. Well, I can always trade in. I can barter ammo to get other stuff. Um, when I get to Queen's Valley. So, yeah, I, I guess getting some ammo wouldn't, wouldn't be bad. All right, uh, so if I'm using my barbed wire club, I get four green dice from my skill and the club. All right, gun tower is a ranged attack, so it's going to go first if it's able to knock me out, which is not possible. Uh, I would not get to fight back. Okay, so, well, this deals one damage. This doesn't deal any damage, neither does this. Uh, the enemy gets to reroll one die that deals no damage, but this one, rerolling this is worse for me, so this is the one I have to reroll, since the enemy is doing it. Why would the enemy reroll the white one? All right, three damage. Can't block it with the vest because of the armor piercing. All right. I need to do three damage. Uh, should be able to get that. Four. All right. So I defeated the gun tower. I get two ammo. That's my reward. Would rather have defeated the dreadnought to get those rewards, but yeah, that wasn't that wasn't happening. All right, um, that was my first action, so, well, I don't need to camp and heal. Uh, I don't want to do the plot point yet. I want to do that at the start of the next turn. So let's do some more exploring in this location. All right, but I'm in mountains again. Two ammo, but I take one damage. Mm, no. Eh, I mean, that might be all right, again, but it won't be useful until I get to Queen's Valley or find a gun. One med, one fuel, and I take one damage to my vehicle. Mm, you know what? I'm going to take that. Now I have three meds. All right, but that's all the fuel I can handle. So, all right, full of fuel. Uh, so that's it. Timer goes down to one when the next turn starts. And the first thing I'm going to do is do this plot action. So that'll be uh, 23 in the book. I wonder if they have a PDF version of this so I can just look stuff up on there. It'd be really nice to have a little app so you can just put in what adventure you're in and then type in which one you want. Um, all right, 23 in Road to Ruin. Not to save time, but I just know eventually this is going to get beat up. 
the road up the ridge of the crater, where the abandoned relay station is located, is hard. But finally, you reach the building you've been looking for. Underneath your feet lies a basin full of dank seawater and rusted antenna dishes, but they're no interest to you. Inside the building, you use signs for the long-dead personnel to find the proper room. After some time, you reach the control center, in which you're supposed to find a communicator necessary for proper operation of the Comb Mine VX. Unfortunately, you have to pry it <clears throat> out of a huge powered panel. So, you carefully remove the communicator. Um, you might need tech ability. That might be a tech test. And I get one green die for tech. Or you choose the brutal way and hit the panel with a crowbar. I, that, I think that's what Alinta would do. Or if you're the trailblazer, you know nothing about DIY, DIY and even less about electronics, so you think of an alternate option. Well, I'm not a trailblazer, I'm a spirit warrior. All right, I choose the brutal way and hit the panel with a crowbar, C83. Uh oh. The miners from Gangrene need work, and this communicator, someone must have taken it, right? Just in case you perform a subtle act of sabotage by hitting the device with the crowbar a few times, then you get out of this place. Move the dominance marker two spaces down the track. Okay. Nope, you don't actually get the communicator. I thought I was trying to remove the communicator, not, not destroy it. Oh well. Well, I guess I'm not worried about getting there in a hurry, but I don't think it would have mattered because uh, I think you needed tech to get it, and well, I would have had a one in six chance of getting it because uh, I'm pretty sure it was uh, needed two successes. Although there could have been other modifiers in that, I don't recall. Oh well, that's fine. Um, one other action. Well, may as well uh, move. I don't want to camp with. Just three damage. Because I do have my vest that can block stuff. Unless everything has armor piercing. But I have nothing to repair, really. Well, a little bit. Uh, I could explore some more, but now nah, let's move. Alright, so it's... I can get here in four if I go through... Well, now I'm not worried about speed as much now. So... Oh, and I resolve the plot action. This goes up to three. Let's see, to avoid this, I could go 2, 4, well, to avoid this and this, I go 2, 4, 6, have to go through this one because there's a crater there, 7. So that would cost 7 to go bypass these two, just go through contaminated wound. That'll cost 1 fuel. Yeah, I'll do that. Or I could spend 0 fuel, but then I have to go through both of these, then it's 1, 2, 3, Four. Oh no, I could go two, four, five. Uh, so I don't have to do the that contaminated wound. I would need an alert token and a contaminated wound for no. Oh, and radiation. Oof. Radiation, contaminated wound, and alert token for um, no fuel or just these two for one fuel. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna spend the fuel. So if my path is like this, so I do get some radiation and one contaminated wound. But I do have lots of meds. And when I'm camping, You can spend as many meds as you want, and each one heals three wounds or one radiation. So, yeah. The radiation's not that bad. And I don't think there's any other... Yeah, there's no more radiation you'd pick up on the way to here. Unless it happens as a result of some event or whatever. Okay, uh, so I have to draw... Uh, so this is highway. All right, Wasteland card, Highway, Winged Death. Oh, okay, yeah, all right, got that one again. No reward for it. Oh, 
but you need to heal one radiation if the enemy is defeated. Uh, let's see. If you have any contaminated wound, this enemy gains threat two. Oh, man. So two threat tokens. I lose one resource. Well, that's going to be an ammo. And the enemy has one extra health, so the enemy has three health. All right, it gets a green and a blue die. It's relentless, so even if I used a ranged weapon, it would still be fighting back. And I am using my barbed wire club. So four greens. I need to do three damage. I'll take it off my uh, radiation. Yeah, two. All right. Well, I could finally use the vest and block that. Or I could take the damage and use some meds to heal. Well, I have to roll two. These are happening at the same time. Okay, I did three damage. So that's just enough. My radiation, at the very least, goes away. Hmm. So I could take the two damage and not use the vest, and then, oops. It would cost seven to heal all that. Well, two meds would take out six, I'd be left with one if I camp. Or I can use the vest, I can break the vest and take no damage. I should just break the vest, because if I'm gonna camp at some point, well, I have two repair, that'd be enough to do the vest, unless something else is broken that I need to repair. So yeah, we'll break the vest and take no damage. Death, you're out of here. Okay, that was my second action, so new new round. Hmm. Should I explore? I mean, should I do the plot action first? Yeah, I should probably do that and camp. We'll do this first. So this is going to go up two. And I read 33. You approach the first bridge, the only solid passage between the two halves of the continent. It turns out the way is shut. The stronghold defending the passage in the town is heavily manned, and within an hour's walk from the bridge, hundreds of travelers are camping, hoping that the gates will open soon. You ask around. It turns out the passage is under a quarantine. Supposedly, there's some horrible virus sweeping the Badlands, and the inhabitants of the first bridge don't want to risk cap catching it. And let's see, I'm at five on the dominance track. Um, all right, so my choices are, you see lots of desperate people around here, and the miners need every pair of hands. Time to persuade some survivors that gangrene is a great place to live. Oh, that's right, yeah, it started at six, it went up one, then down two. Next choice, you instigate the people against the guardians of the passage, spreading false rumors about the virus. Or, if you are the Avenger, you can do the other one, which I was the Avenger last time. I had this route, so I did that. So, uh, persuading the survivors that gangrene is a great place to live, or start start a riot or something by spreading false rumors about the virus. I'm gonna spread false rumors about the virus. Ooh. All right, you walk from one campfire to another, telling crazy stories about the virus. <clears throat> telling crazy stories about the virus you learned about merely an hour earlier. It's supposed to be very vir <clears throat> virulent. And the first infected people are here, in this very camp. <gasps> oh no. The only way is to get to the other side of the Great Divide and, and uh, count that they'll develop a vaccine in one of the great cities of the East. Test aid. X. Wait. Success. Failure. It, how many? What? 8X just means 
roll and my aid is what two greens yes roll and however many successes you get will determine what how good the reward is but all right well I got one but it doesn't say if you have zero to one or anything like that it just says success c87 failure c142 I maybe that X is a typo I don't know well I did get a success so I guess well okay so maybe if I get if it's success I see 87 and then it'll say well if you however many successes you got that'll determine what happens all right but if you got zero then you go to 142 all right so let's go to 87 well, I forgot about her special ability So actually, I had a slightly better chance of killing that Dreadnought because it says after you make your melee roll, you may suffer one damage to deal one additional damage. So really, I only had to do six to it with my four green dice. Still not a good chance of that happening, but it was actually a little better than I thought. Anyway. <clears throat> now I forgot what number I was supposed to read. 87. That was the one I was just on, right? Yeah. 87. People were already furious about the quarantine, and more groups are reaching the bridge with each passing hour. The rumors you made up <clears throat> spread like wildfire, reaching levels of absurdity you've never considered possible. Soon, everyone around speaks only about storming the stronghold. When the panicked guards open fire on the travels, travelers protesting in front of the main gate, the bomb that's been ticking for the last few hours explodes. A bloody fight for each meter of the bridge erupts. Hundreds of desperate travelers are killed while the grunts retreat to the stronghold, leaving the passage open. You wait out the battle, then safely cross the empty first bridge in the morning. <laughs> Move the dominance marker. Okay, so here we go. Move the dominance marker one space up the track for each obtained success. If you obtained at least three successes, gain one experience point. Ooh. Note in the Outback Chronicles that you started the Battle of the First Bridge. Well, it only goes up one. And then Outback Chronicle. I started the Battle of the First Bridge. It is so noted. Okay. Uh, oh, that was that was my first action. I was resolving that. Okay, second action. Um, I could camp and repair my vest and just use one med. Because if I use two meds, I'll be, it's worth three repair, uh, well, healing wounds, but this only takes two, so I'd be wasting a little bit. I don't want to do that. Um, yeah, let's go ahead and Camp, or maybe I should explore, and next round I can camp and then do whatever. Uh, now, let's go ahead and camp. So I can repair two, well that'll be the best. And then I can use one med to heal three health. Alright, so that's it for that round, so now it's down to three. First action, um, should I move first? Let's see, to avoid this, it was one, two, eight. Uh, no, I'm going to explore first. If I can get some gas, I can get there in one turn. If I can get some fuel. All right, I'm on highway, one med. And no, I don't want, yeah, I'm on highway. I don't want a med. One med and one damage to vehicle. No. Well, I can draw one more. Well, I could draw another one after that if I spent fuel, but I want fuel. Oh, it's this one again. 
one fuel, one fuel, one med to damage the vehicle. Well, I'm stuck with this one, so I'm definitely going to have to have to damage the vehicle. It's not terrible. And yeah, I believe this was supposed to say one fuel, one ammo, one or one ammo, one fuel, one med, because that otherwise that's weird. Pretty sure that's a misprint. And actually, in this case, I'm just going to do whichever one's worse for me. Um, I'd rather have fuel. I don't need ammo because I don't have any guns. However, I already have one fuel, so if it's really supposed to be two fuel, I wouldn't even get an ammo. I'd only get one fuel because that's all I have room for. So we'll do that one because that's worse for me. Although I really think that's supposed to say one of each resource, two damage to the vehicle. I wonder if anybody's asked about that yet on Board Game Geek. All right. Um, so one action was... Oh, wait a minute. Yeah. My first action was exploring, now I'm moving. So now I can get all the way to Queen's Valley. By spending both fuel. Um, and then how much does it take to get to here? Two, four, five, six, seven, eight. Well, eh, that's probably going to be just take two turns to get there. It'd be four, well, five to get to here. And I could stop on the mountains or the desert. So it's going to take two turns to get down here. So, yeah, let's spend... Because one fuel won't get me there. So if I go one, two, four, six, eight, by spending two fuel, that'll give me nine, really. Well, then I don't have to go through anything. And I draw a mountain wasteland card. All right, and then on the way there, I can go two, three, four, five, six, seven, or two, four, eight. And then I don't get the contaminated wound, I will get a threat token. Uh, so actually, yeah, I could get here with one fuel if I do both of these. But no, I have plenty of time. I'm not worried about it. All right. Hillbillies. All right, I've fought hillbillies before. I'll get fuel and meds. They only have three health, so should be fine. Well, pretty good chance of defeating them. They are relentless, so even if I shot them with a the gun, they'd still fight back. Uh, they get a white, a green, and a blue. And a spade. This enemy deals X damage, where X is the number of damage this enemy has. Maximum of three. If this enemy has no... No, not health. Damage. What? Oh, oh, I see. X is the number of yeah, wounds this enemy has. So if you shot the hillbillies, then they'd have, then they'd have uh, wounds when they attack, because they're relentless, they would still attack you. And then a spade would deal however much damage, up to three. Um, these will get resolved at the same time, so a spade is going to be a miss, I guess. All right, what are the hillbillies going to do? Two. And, well, I got five. Only needed three. This barbed wire club has been pretty good. Uh, all right, so hillbillies are dead. I get a med and a fuel. Um, I haven't come across any gear yet. And then so I'm up to four meds. I could trade those in. I could barter at Queen's Valley. It might actually be a good idea. Trade in eh, some of the meds, trade in the ammo, get something better. Anyway, uh, they do two damage. I could just break the vest, though, and block it. Bye bye, hillbillies. Wait. I was moving my second action and I just didn't put this over.
Yeah, yeah, the first thing I did was explore. That was my second action. All right, so <clears throat> my turn's over, round is over, now we're down to there. <clears throat> well, if I'm gonna take two turns to get to there, I should do Queen's Valley this turn. Um, but I think I'll do the city action first. So if I take the city action, I can barter, and then I can uh, maybe go to the workshop, and if I find any good gear, I can go to the workshop and repair it. Yeah, all right, I'm gonna barter. <clears throat> go into the stalls. So we pull out the bottom three gear cards in the gear deck. So this is the offer. Ooh, assault armor. AK. It has full auto. Um, I think that just means you can spend an extra ammo to re-roll dice. And it rolls a green and a blue while it's broken. When it's working, ooh, a blue and a red. And you ignore one botch. So, unless you roll two botches, you don't break the AK. Ooh. That's decent. Blue and a red. It is two-handed though, so I couldn't hold it and a melee weapon. Um, so if I want to get that, I do need to keep the ammo. Uh, let's see. And it you know, costs three to repair, but I could immediately go to the um, workshop in Queens Valley and repair it. Okay, or there's, and it costs three, so I could trade in. Could trade in, say, free meds. Could trade in a fuel and two meds if I wanted. I don't know. All right, let's see. Assault armor. When it's broken, it blocks two damage, and then it would be discarded. Costs three to repair it, and its value is three. It blocks three damage when it's working. But it costs three to repair. I can only repair that in a city because I only have two repair abilities. So I don't think I want that one. And then the med kit. When testing aid, you may discard this card to automatically pass this test. Well, I'm good at aid, so I don't think I need that. If it's working, when testing aid, you gain one blue die. You obtain one additional success in this test. Oh, if you roll a spade, you gain one additional success in this test and heal two uh, wounds. Uh, and you don't even have to discard it or anything. Ooh, that's actually kind of nice. When testing aid, you get an extra die. And a spade is a success. Well, how many more times am I going to have to be rolling aid? Uh, now, that only costs two, uh, but that also, if I want to repair it, is only going to happen in the city workshop. Hmm. I kind of like that. Aid might come up again. Uh, but if I get this and repair it, I do need ammo, but it's a blue and a red. Well, it's a blue, a red, and a white. Because her gun's ability sucks. As opposed to the barbed wire club, which gets four greens. Eh. Four greens isn't that much worse than a blue, a red, and a white. So, no, I don't think I want the AK. So, med kit, I can just exchange my ammo for the med kit. And do I want the assault armor? I don't think so. Well, it might be nice to have some backup armor. Uh, well, at that point, it would probably be use three meds. Hmm. And then I only have room for two more pieces of equipment in my ATB. I probably should repair that at some point. Um. Yeah, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and do that. All right, I'm going to get both the assault armor and the med kit. And then my other city action is going to be to go to the, um, whatever it's called, 
uh, go to the workshop and repair one piece of broken equipment. So I bought both of those. I do not have the AK. Salt armor is broken, but I have the med kit. So any more aid rolls I have to do, I'm in good shape for those. Oh, that was the city action. Didn't move that over. And then the other action is, am I doing the plot? Yeah, I'm doing the plot. Point. All right, so uh, that's the other action. This goes up two, and I read 34. I probably need to do a little more exploring, though, when I get a chance. Oh, well, I'm gonna, if I'm going to take two turns to get to there, sure. I'll also explore along the way, unless I take a bunch of damage and have to camp. All right, 34. You encourage Dr. Fang, not 34, 33, oh, 43, that's what it was. Okay, 43. You reach Queens Valley, a mysterious city in the mountains, a mecca of engineers and scientists protected by a fleet of flying vessels. The board of the Western Company negotiated with the Queens representatives that they could use local <coughs> workshops and specialists. In other words, a steady supply of coal and ore from gangrene uh, for the help of re in rebuilding Comb Mine ZX. You take all the items you found from your ride and follow the security guide cards to a special elevator that takes you to the lab level in the bowels of the city. You hand everything to the right people and sit in a waiting room for the outsiders. An hour later, the chief mechanic appears. He says that the stuff you brought has been checked. Resolve the proper entry depending on the game elements you have and notes in the Outback Chronicles. If you noted that you have the full documentation about Comb Mine ZX and have special card number five, no, that's the communicator, blah, blah, blah. If you noted that you have little data about the Combine ZX and you have special card number five, no. Or if you have full documentation about Combine ZX and you have the special card number five without any general token, nope. If you noted that you have little data and you have the special card number five without any general tokens, or you have the full documentation of Combine ZX, yes. Move the dominance marker one space up the track. Cross out the note and from the Outback Chronicles about having full documentation and remove the special card number five from the game if possible. All right, communicator's gone. Okay. Um, that's it. And that was my second action. That ends the round, so now this goes down to three. And I'm going to spend two turns getting there. I think it's going to be explore and move for this one. Um, you know what? Let's explore first. I'm going to explore, or do I want to explore the desert? No, I'm going to explore first. All right. So explore. I'm in the mountains. One ammo. I don't need ammo. So let's draw again. And unless I perform another city action, um, uh, or unless I, yeah, unless I do city action again while I'm here, this is the only chance I'd have to trade in any resources. Ooh, one ammo, one fuel, one med, one gear, but attach one malfunction card to your vehicle. And if I get two malfunctions, I lose. Uh, no. I really want that, but no. Can't remove a malfunction even in a city in this scenario. Or no, you can't remove one in a city. You could remove one if you get like some gear that can do it. Uh, all right, I'm stuck with this one. One ammo, eh. One ammo and place a threat marker on there. Well, I guess that just means if I ever come back to Queens Valley, I'll get a threat token. All right, oh well. It wasn't that good, but. Okay, next action is to move. Uh, so we said it's two, four, oh, wait a minute. If I go, if I avoid everything, two, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, it's eleven. Ooh, uh, well, if I spend the one fuel, I can do that in two turns, and then I don't have to even get a threat token. Because uh, it's only, what's that, desert? It's only four to there, so I, no matter what, I can get here in one turn. So yeah, you know what? This I'm only gonna need 
I only need one more fuel for moving around. So, uh, well, let's see. If I do it now, it's two, four, five, seven. I'll be in mountains, and then one, three, four the next turn. Or I can stop here now and use the fuel on the next one. Let's go to the desert instead. Why not? All right, so I'm not using the fuel yet. I'm in the desert. <clears throat> Wasteland card. Night Riders. Ooh. Remember the Night Rider. Threat one. Plus one health. Ooh, so five health. Not going to be easy to kill. Oh, that's right. I should also probably camp at some point and repair the ATV. Uh, my vest is currently broken, so it'll only block one damage, and it would be discarded if I do that, but I do have the assault armor as well. Oh, you know what? I probably should have just equipped the assault armor. I wasn't thinking about that. Too late now. Engagement. If you have not performed the move action this turn, well, when would you get one of these cards without moving? I don't know. <clears throat> Discard two chosen resources. Ooh, so that would be bad. Spade, it deals one damage. Alright, it gets a white, a blue, and a green. I get four greens. But if I do... Okay, I get experience and fuel. I don't really need the fuel. But yeah, it could come in handy for something. And the experience, I don't have any so far, so one's not going to do a whole lot of good. Uh, but if I can do three damage, I'll go ahead and uh, suffer one extra damage. So I can make it a success. Or kill the Knight Riders. Alright, uh, they have a ranged attack, so they attack first. Not if I can do three. If I can do four damage, because they, they have one extra. Spade, what does a spade do? One damage. All right, so they do two. Um, hmm, I can break the vest and still take one damage, or I can take two. Uh, you know what? I'll go ahead and break the vest. So vest is gone. Okay, now it's melee time. All right, I need at least four damage. Ooh, I got five. Which was just enough. Knight Raiders had five health, so I get one experience and one fuel. Looks like that was my second action, so round's over. New round. Um, yeah, let's move first. I'm in desert, that's desert. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna move first. So it's two, three, four, five, six. So that'll cost one fuel to make it there and avoid the threat token, and I'm in desert again. So another one of these. Rust children. Ooh, this one's new. A white, a green, and a blue. I'm going to get four greens. Engagement. If you're on a highway space, this enemy deals two damage. Good. I'm on desert. Spade. Enemy deals one damage. And resolution. If this enemy is not defeated, discard two chosen resources. That stinks. I'll get a gear. Oh, I forgot to uh, equip this before I moved. I mean, it's not like I'd be swapping out gear. It's just have armor or have nothing. So no, no, we're, we're going to say I didn't forget to do that. And there, I have that armor on. And we'll just keep this this way. All right. Um, so only three health. I'll get a piece of gear and not have to discard two chosen resources. Uh, they're both melee attacks. They resolve at the same time. Rust children do three and a spade is four. 
Uh, well, all right. Well, I'll definitely be using this to make that be only two, and then this will be broken. Or, not broken, it's already broken. I'll have to discard it. And then, do I get new gear? Oh, that's only three. Right, because a spade doesn't do anything. Nope. It's like I can re-roll dice, but then this breaks. I don't want to break this. I like it. Um, they're doing, well, they're just doing two damage as long as I um, block it with that. So I can definitely take one uh, wound to deal one additional damage to rest children. Oh no, they only have three. What am I thinking? I was thinking it was four for some reason. No, I killed the rest children with three. All right. Um, well, yeah, since I can't repair this ever until I get to the pumps, but I don't know. Maybe it would be useful to have it then, but no. Uh, let's just discard, or yeah, discard this to block two of the damage. So I still take two. And then I get a piece of gear for killing the rest children. next. Ooh, six shooter. It's one-handed. Uh, let's see. It only has one green die. Mm. If you do not have at least one green die in blades, this one weapon is considered two-handed. Ugh. But I do have at least one green die in blades. A spade deals two damage. But yeah, it only gets a green die. If I used this, all I'd have is one white and one green. Ugh. Oh, well, that's with it broken. What about when it's not broken? Uh, spade still does two damage. That's the same. Now you get a green and a white. Well, not very useful, but it's one-handed. I may as well equip it. Not going to be that useful. All right. Um, it does only take one to repair. Okay, that was first turn. Um, I should probably camp. Just in case, I want to repair this and use my other med. Or maybe I should explore first. If I get some more meds, I can heal all this. But yeah, it's one contaminated wound. All right, yeah, other one is camping. I can repair two on the vehicle, or I could repair the six shooter and one on the vehicle, but Actually, you know what? Let's do that. Six shooter only takes one to repair, so there, it's repaired. And I've repaired one damage to my vehicle, and then I can use meds to heal three. Or I could turn this over and spend another to discard that, and then I'd still have two regular wounds, but no, I'll take the uh, one contaminated wound. All right, that was it, down to one. Uh, but that's all right, because next turn I can do this plop token, and that'll go up two. So now we're on 53. All right. 53 in the Book of Tales. All right, 53. The second to last stop on the road to ruin is the Canopy Ranch. It's said that before the scourge they raised thousands of cows here, and even today you might find some, though for unknown reasons such herds are often protected by Cerbero constructs. Not so long ago, a certain guy called Butcher Bob started a business <clears throat> on the outskirts of Canopy. He considers himself a big rancher, but he and his cowboys usually steal cows from robots and sell them to survivors. He's the one who provides the best meat to the Union's canteens. You find Bob there, a well-preserved 50-year-old guy, working his cattle hand-in-hand hand with his men. You introduce yourself as the agent of the company. The rancher takes you in uh, to his small office, where you sit closely watched by the two biggest cowboys you've ever seen. After a short conversation, you learn that some of his cows contracted some mysterious disease. Actually, this could be the source of the rumors about the virus and the quarantine on the first bridge. And Bob's freezers are full of contaminated meat. All right, so choose. You suggest that Bob should send contaminated meat to the next delivery uh, to Gangrene, C-157, 
or you persuade Bob to send a shipment of good meat to gangrene, uh, but to write in the report for the company that it is contaminated, that really upsets Bob. If you started the battle at the first bridge, you can do something else. You can threaten Bob uh, that you'll tell everywhere that his ranch is the origin of the virus. Mm -hmm. Or if you're the spirit warrior, which I am, you want to take a look at the cows in the freezer. Maybe you'll learn something. Hmm. I wonder if aid would go with that. And I have my med kit. Well, I did start the battle of the first bridge, so I kind of want to see what will result from that. Uh, but I am the spirit warrior, so well, let's do the spirit warrior one. I want to take a look at the cows in the freezer. Maybe I'll learn something. So C106. Oh, yeah, I see aid test right here. All right, you end up inside the freezer and try not to show fear when one of the cowboys slams its door shut. You're surrounded by tons of beef. You know you won't bring dead cows back to life, but there's a chance not everything here will go to waste. So test aid two, and this says, right, when, that, when testing aid, you gain one blue die. Nice. And if I get a spade, I get an additional um, success, and I get to heal two wounds. Well, that'll get rid of that. Nice. All right, so I get two greens and a blue. I just need two successes and a spade will help even more. Well, I barely got the two. That does nothing. Okay, well, that's fine. I don't get to heal at all, but I passed. All right, so what does success get me? Uh, what was I looking at? 106. Success. You learn which parts of bodies are infected by the disease and cut them out. The rest can be safely eaten. When you leave the freezer, Bob is delighted. He might still make some money on that meat. As a reward, he lets you choose what he should do with the con yeah, you, he lets you choose what he should do with the contaminated leftovers. Gain one experience and choose one resource. Um, um, I don't have any meds. I don't need fuel. Uh, I do have a six shooter. So, I don't know. I don't have any meds, but I only have the one. Yeah, ammo, why not? Oh, and move the dominance marker one space down or one space up the track. Well, I get to choose. Well, if I move it up, it hits eight, and then that triggers something. If I move it down, then nobody's dominating. Uh, yeah, you know what, let's keep it in the middle. Why not? All right, I'll move it down. Okay, um, that was all it said on there. Or it might be a good idea to make the Western company dominant. I don't know. Since I've failed this thing three times, well, I've only failed the Northern track once, I have no idea what would be good. Well, it seems like on the southern one, it's good to move this up as far as possible so you can fight uh, golfer and uh, <clears throat> he won't have that much help. Although that requires also having some good weapons. Anyway, all right, rounds over. Wait, yeah, I did move that up. Rounds over, so now this goes down to two. But I could do that one right now. Should I do some exploring first? And wait until the last turn to do that? Get some more stuff just in case I need it? Probably a good idea. Oh, yeah, I can explore and then move and then do a city action, trade in some resources or other stuff I might have. Yeah, let's do that. All right, first action is explore. Uh, I'm in the desert. So one med, one ammo, and one damage the vehicle. Uh, yeah, I'll take that. And then move. So one, two, three, four, five, no, four to get there, avoiding that. So either way, four or five, I'd be able to get there. All right, and I get desert wasteland card. We 16 wheelers. 
Okay, uh, no traits other than on a fate roll, and that's its roll. I'm probably using my club. On a fate roll, the enemy deals one damage. And then it says two damage instead if you must resolve any threat tokens in this combat. Nope. All right, so they just roll that, and it's a range attack. They go first. If they knock me out, I don't get to retaliate. There's a tiny chance it happens. Yeah, well, they did four damage. Yeah. Probably going to need a camp. Well, I only have one med. I'm going to get a fuel and an experience. Ooh, I'll, I'll actually get an upgrade as long as I kill them. All right, so they deal four damage to me. I can't block anything because I don't have any armor anymore. And I'm using my club. Oh, wait, actually, I didn't even look at it. Six shooter, what do I roll for that? Uh, I would be rolling two whites and a green. If, but if I get a spade, although the only thing that has is the two whites won't have one, the green has one, that would deal two damage. No, no, no. No. Um, barbed wire club's better. Ooh, just made it. Four. Okay, I get an experience point, and I get a fuel, and they do four damage to me. Yes. Although if I'd only had three, I would have used this to deal one more damage. All right, they do what I say, four damage. All right, so I have five wounds. One of them is contaminated. Two meds would heal all of that. Okay, now the second turn, round's over, so now, well, before the next round starts, experience check, I actually get an upgrade. <clears throat> um, so I can do one of the generic upgrade cards, or I can take one of the upgrade cards specific to Alinta, so I have to find those. Um, yeah. Is that her? Yeah, all right, that's her. So each character has four different upgrade cards you can get. Some of them just upgrade skills and stuff. Other ones are gear. Uh, or they're the generic one, the general ones that any character can get. Um, the most experience you can have is well, you get an upgrade at 3, 6, 9, and then this flips over and says plus 10, and then you can get to 19. Uh, that's the maximum experience, and that will give you 6 upgrades. Hmm. Oh, and if I... can't remember. If I get one of these, I think it's working, not broken. Uh, I might have to check on that. If I want one of these. Ooh, cleaver. Oh, I can't get the cleaver until I have 6 experience. I only have three currently, so nope. I can't get this one yet. I'd have to, next time I upgrade, which isn't gonna happen this adventure, I'd be able to get that. But out of curiosity, let's see, when it's broken, it does a white and a red. Uh, you can ignore one botch. Spade deals one damage, a botch deals one damage, then suffer one damage and return this card to its deck. If it's working, you can still ignore one botch. A spade still does one damage. It was two reds. Uh, if you get a botch, you can deal. Actually, oh no, that was the other character that can ignore one botch. Uh, yeah, break it if you get a botch. Deal one damage, suffer one damage, break this. Yeah, it's like that. Yeah, two reds, that's nice. But I can't get it, so. All right, blessed staff. So with the working side first. Break this card before making any test except in combat to gain one additional success in the test. Eh, all right. I might want that. Just I'll probably have to do some test here. Uh, but not in combat. When it's broken, return this card to your upgrade deck before making any test. 
except in combat to automatically pass the test. That would have been nice for that stupid negotiation one earlier, although this is specific to her. Hmm. Now, yeah, does it start broken or working? I think upgrade ones, they start working. I think it's, yeah, it's starting gear and upgrades start in working condition. Those are the only ones to do. All right, what are her other ones? Strange concoctions. You may suffer one radiation to heal two damage. Cannot be used in combat. All right. You can suffer one contaminated wound to choose and re-roll one of your dice. Hmm. The new result must be accepted. Okay. Or Fury of the Spirits. If you have at least three wounds, spade obtained by enemies are considered blanks. Okay. Wisdom of the Land. You gain plus one exploration. No, I don't need that. When performing the camp action, you heal one additional wound for each uh, med you spend? No. Adamant and brave, no game effect can force you to lose dice. Ah, but you need six for that. So I can't get that. I don't really like any of these. So far I like the blessed staff, although I kind of want it to be broken. Well, I can make sure I do something Hmm. Hmm. Let's see. Oh, this was my second turn to get there. So well, I'm gonna have to. Yeah, I'm gonna have to do the plot next turn. Nothing's gonna be able to break this, but I will get an additional success. But yeah, it'd be really nice in case I have to do some other kind of test that I could just discard this and have an automatic success. Well, what are the generic ones? Uh, well, these both say well trained. All right, so these two are the same. Uh, when you gain this card, place two of your knight tokens next to two choice, choice, chosen skills below. Survival, negotiate, aid, or tech. Um, you have one additional green die in each of these skills. So I could make aid have three green dies if I wanted, plus a blue. Uh, hmm. I mean, this will just give me an automatic success, though. And I'm probably only going to have one more test I have to do. All right, so well-trained, those are the same, or specialized. When you gain this card, place two of your, ah, place two of your tokens next to two chosen skills below. Whenever you test one of the chosen skills, you obtain one additional success. So wait, what was this? One additional green die or one additional success. I'd rather have the one additional success. But that's only for two of these four skills. This will be one success for anything, um, but I can only use it once. All right, I mean, those would have been good earlier. Okay, those two are the same. And then controlled, fury, focused, eagle-eyed, gunslinger. Oh man, lots of stuff. When attacking barehanded or with a melee weapon, you may flip this card to deal one additional damage. You flip it over and then it's controlled fury. Whenever you are dealt any unprevented Damage in combat, you flip this card. Okay, all right. Focused. When testing any skill, even in combat, you may flip this to reroll one of your dice. No. Eagle Eye. Whenever you gain any resources during an explore action, you automatically gain one chosen resource. Mm. This one you don't flip over, so it must have, yes, something else on the other side. Herbalist. Treat the repair cost, cost of X on all gear cards as if it was two. Eh, no. Yeah, Eagle Eyed also would have been kind of nice earlier. Extra resources every time you explore. There we go. Gunslinger. When attacking with a one handed uh, range weapon, you resolve your ranged attack before your enemy's ranged attack. Okay, so basically, if you're using a ranged attack, you pretty much have ambush. And smooth tongued. Whenever you barter, no. Um, yeah, I think blessed staff. Taking that. But yes, I, I would rather it be broken. Uh, I don't think I have a choice on that. Let's see. These are all hers. All right, that took too long. Oh, 
Good thing I'm about done because it's hockey time. Okay, all right, so last possible round. Um, before I do that, just in case, I should do a city action first. I can heal uh, one radiation and four health at the quack, and then I don't need to repair my vehicle. I don't have any equipment that needs to be repaired, so I can barter. Um, yeah, I don't need the fuel. I really don't need the six shooter or the ammo, so I actually have a lot to barter. So yeah, let's barter. Although whatever I get's gonna be broken, since I already went to the quack, I should have bartered first. Fire. Oh, that should be red. Fire axe. Had that before. Uh. <clears throat> Tactical vest, you get one extra um, capacity, yeah, and it'll block one. It'll block one damage when it's repaired. It'll block two damage. Takes two to repair, but I'm not going to get a chance to repair anything. Gilly suit. After you draw a wasteland card, you may discard it and draw a new wasteland card. Ooh, that's when it's broken. Then you discard this though. Eh, when it's working, after you draw a wasteland card, you do the same thing and you break it. Alright. So if you have this and it's working condition, ugh, I don't really want any of this stuff. I mean, I guess I'll t take the c tactical vest to block one damage. Alright, what don't I want? Well, I said I don't need the fuel. I need three, though. Well, I guess the fuel and one ammo. Why not? can be immediately equipped. All right, well, that wasn't really worth it. Okay, and then other action is plot point. All right, so I didn't get to do this last time I was on this route because I died reaching pumps. So this is now completely new, 63. It says epilogue, that's it? I just had to reach this? This is right, right? Yep, plot token six, C63. Um, so is that it? I just had to reach it and I win? I don't know, epilogue, you knelt before the pilgrim. You're wandering around a, uh, the stalls in one of the new Sydney marketplaces. The place is crowded, almost stunning you <clears throat> with its noise so overwhelming after weeks spent in the quiet of the wastes. When you lean over a table full of clips and mags to all kinds of weapons, the locket you found after meeting the stranger from the desert slips out of your open collar. What locket? What are you talking about? The peddler grabs you by your wrist and bares his collarbone. There's a tattoo of an eye closely resembling the one from the locket. The prince shall soon come, whispers the man. We must be ready. Then, his hand, then he hands you a mag perfect for the gun inside your backpack. His time is near, adds the traitor. You walk away be bewildered and unsure what's just happened. That, I, that doesn't make any sense. Oh, jeez, because I'm not in Road to Ruin. I'm in Safe Haven. Oh, man. Ah, okay. I was in the wrong section of the book. That's all right, I'll forget all about that by the time I get to safe haven. Pumps, hey, there we go. The final destination of your backbreaking journey along Highway 1. <clears throat> the city expanding around a few barely working refineries and petrol storages. Access to oil makes the rulers of pumps one of the forces in the waste to be reckoned with. Even the gangs prowling the area of, uh, around pumps never cause trouble in the city itself. Time to tie up all the loose ends. You can perform one free camp action. Um, well, I can heal or repair. I could repair the tactical vest, or I can get rid of my one contaminated wound. Um, I don't know. How about we repair the tactical vest? Then resolve the proper entry, depending on the situation of the game. If the special card number 10 is in the game, um, is that the communicator? 
No, communicator was five. Which was ten? Wait. Was ten? No, ten wasn't the golfer. I don't know. I had ten the first time I was up here. I don't have special card ten. Otherwise, see one twenty-seven. Okay. When you arrive at the pumps, you have completely no idea who's waiting for you there. You hope to make a deal with petrol mongers, <laughs> but it turns out that local workers have already fallen under the influence of the negotiators from the gangrene miners union. It's basically a gang that can force even the most stubborn opponents to do their bidding. Oh yeah, it's the miners union. Take card number 10 from the special deck and place it face up on the plot next to the plot sheet. These are the GMU negotiators. The enforcers of the miners fighting for influence with the Western Company, C8. All right, back to eight, and we need card 10. GMU negotiators. 15 health. Ah, just like golfer. Ooh. Uh, fighting them isn't going to go too well. Threat 1. Armor piercing. This will give me one automatic success, but not in combat. So I want to do I want to do whatever I can to not have to deal with them. <laughs> Please give me something where I can use an aid roll, because then I'll get two greens, a blue, and a success. Anyway, hmm. Okay. Uh, eight. Resolve the proper entry depending on the position of the dominance marker on the track. Space four to through seven. C sixty six. If you're the Avenger, then no matter what, you do one sixteen. But I'm not the Avenger, so four through seven, sixty six. And now I get to find out that probably I want this to be all the way at 10. 66, you've done your best to appease both sides in the conflict and avoid harm to the quarreling miners' community. However, at the end of your journey, you face a new dilemma. Someone has to make a difficult decision, and it seems you're the only volunteer. Mm. You, quote, sell the Queens Valley engineers and the representatives of the powerful oilers from pumps to the union's negotiators. <laughs> C-112. You've done your job as well as you could. Time to leave, <laughs> all right? Or you deal with the, s the thugs from the gangrene miners union. I do not have the weapons for that. If it's anything like golfer, they'll be down to nine health because of this, but I can't do nine damage. Well, if I rolled f four greens and they all came up with a two, and I use well, then yeah, I could use this to do a total of nine, but well, that's about a well, that's a one in twelve ninety six chance. No, thank you. Not gonna work. So my choices are: I sell the Queens Valley engineers and the representatives to the powerful oilers from pumps of the power oilers from pumps to the union's negotiators. Okay, so completely um, <clears throat> betray the people that hired me, I think. Oh wait, these are the Queens Valley engineers and the representatives of the Powerful Oilers. I guess I would be portraying them because I'm helping out GMU, not the Western Company. Or I've done my job as well as I could and I just leave. Hmm. All right, 112. So I am selling out, selling the engineers to the GMU negotiators. Comb Mines ZX needs one good checkup and proper fuel, and it will work like new. You know this, but the Union goons, not necessarily. That's why you inform their leaders, in which dirig <coughs> dirigible the Queens Valley technicians will come to pumps and what pipelines to blow up to silence the oilers. Oh. Do I need to blow stuff up? I only have two ammo. I don't have any fuel. You don't have to wait long for their reaction. The airship is shot down and accidentally falls down right onto the main pumping station owned by the oilers. Everything goes up in flames. Okay. The last to go is Comb Mine ZX. Smashed with pickaxes and sledgehammers, it falls apart like a house of cards. It's still steel frame moaning in metallic pain. C-155. 
All right. Did I did I lose because I? Uh... didn't uh, uphold my contract your actions in the north turned this region into an into a utopian ruin okay workers union spread like a plague through gangrene queens valley and pumps and it's safe to assume they'll soon reach new sydney people say that the first negotiators have appeared in the south slackening of duties and social privileges demoralized workers and ruined both the western company and the oilers Waves of protest shook the weak north and turned it into a lawless land. Upon seeing the results of your actions, you decide to look for solace in mutant settlements in the far south. Maybe there you'll forget about your last trip along the road to ruin. Your night wins, yay, though you have the impression that not many people are as happy as you are. <laughs> well, at least I won. All right, but it sounds like maybe there's more than one way, more than one... Um, conclusion with winning although it could be you fight them and then you get the same thing if you succeed I don't know I don't know either way at least I finally won I'm gonna note that in the Outback Chronicle Alenta finally victorious on the road to ruin and well I didn't get to fight start a new um, adventure yet but hey, that means tomorrow, although I have a lot of work to do, I may have to not stream tomorrow. I don't know if I'll have time to play. No, at the very least, I'll do a short stream. I'll try do one attempt at one of the other ones. Tomorrow, I get to do a different adventure, finally. All right. Okay, so that's marked down. All right, done with the first adventure of Waste Nights. So the next one I'm going to do, not yet. Uh, Safe Haven's another easy one. I want to do the easy ones first. Uh, this one says it takes three hours, two to four players. page in there. Sunken Treasures is competitive only, so I don't get to do that. Oh, Awakening. No, this page is one. Medium difficulty, three hours, so I don't want to do that one yet. So Safe Haven, and then I think there's one other easy one. Yeah, that's competitive only. Rise of the Red Lord is advanced, so I don't want to do that one yet. Spreading Corruption is medium. Deadly Cargo was competitive. And then Lost Garrison, that's another easy one. All right. Um, so Lost Garrison or Safe Haven are the ones I want to do next. And then there's the medium one, advanced, and then the medium. Yeah, I'll do the other two easy ones. I think I'll do Lost Garrison next. Once this village on the outskirts of Brisbane was called to Jakala. Now it's just ginger muds. <laughs> like only gingers live there? In fact, it's ginger all around here, but no one has seen any mud since the last rain half a year ago. All right, all right. So Lost Garrison, I'll do this one tomorrow. Oh, hey, Dice Chuck. So what's the verdict? Is this a good game? I was just about to end the stream. Um, I like it. It took me four tries to do the very first uh, yeah, whatever in there. Took me four tries to do the very first um, adventure, uh, whatever, Road to Ruin, the one that's only solo. The rest of them are all require multiple nights. Uh, I, I, yeah, I like it. I definitely want to keep playing some more. Um, I mean, we'll see once I do all the, well, at least some of the multiplayer ones, because there are. Well, since I have expansion stuff, yeah, there's the one solo one, there are two that are competitive, and then uh, five that are uh, all cooperative. 
So we'll see after I've played a couple of the cooperative ones how it goes. Because the, the first one was also supposed to be really short. The other ones are two to three times as long at least. So yeah, I'm going to start one tomorrow, although tomorrow's probably going to be a shorter stream because I have a lot of work to do. And I'm behind. Uh, I'm going to do some work right now while I watch some hockey because I probably missed... Yeah, I probably missed the puck drop. But that's all right. I'll get to see most of the game. King's wild. All right, so I'm going to go do that. <clears throat> uh, oh, and I'll, I'm also probably will stream a little early tomorrow. Well, I don't know. No, it'll probably just be a slightly short stream. Yep, I'm going to go watch some hockey. But yeah, I, I do really like this so far. So... Like I said, I'll see after uh, <clears throat> you watched a great game. Uh, who won? But yeah, I'm going to go watch some hockey. Oh, yep, yeah, puck drop. Oh, my phone says the puck drop. It's not supposed to tell me that. Well, I've missed less than half the first period. All right. Well, yeah, you take it easy, Dice Chuck. Oh, Leafs Canadians 4-5 overtime. Sounds good. Yeah, by the, I've, by the time I finished playing, um, all the games were pretty much over. So I didn't catch anything last night, but that's why I was going to end a little early tonight. So... Uh, let's see. The game had everything. It was very close and exciting. Well, that's what I'm hoping for today. But, yeah, I need to go do that. So, hockey time for me. Uh, we'll come back to the wasteland of Australia tomorrow. <laughs>